uh, today's actually the last card reveal. Um, everything was basically dumped, so we have all the cards in front of us, 135. Uh, we're not going to be viewing all of them because I've ever done one part and two part with a bunch of people. Uh, but today I have a guest with me, another Twitch streamer. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey guys. Hey, hi, howdy. Uh, my name is Jay. I'm on DJ Blackstar JB on Twitch, and I stream sometimes. Awesome, man. It's awesome to have you here. I saw your like stuff on Twitch, and I was like, okay, he's in a Hearthstone too. You know, I kind of want to get everybody involved if I can, you know, and it's good to like collab with people. So I figured, okay, I'll message him, see what's up, and I'm really glad he was able to come along today. And, yeah, I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate it. Trust me. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, one of the more important parts here is actually we're going to get to the card review. Uh, so why don't we just get started with it? We've got a lot in front of us. Uh, so the first card I actually wanted to review is on the screen right now. Uh, it's Emerus. So that's the 10 mana dragon for Hunter, the 8-8. Um, yeah. So yeah. the battle cry reads out, double the attack and health of all minions in your hand. Um, I'm going to let DJ Blackstar take away this one. What do you think? It's it's a card. I'll give it that much. It's really conditional. You have to have good cards in your hand, and then you still have to play them on the next turn. And on the turn before that, you play a 10 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, nothing else. Yeah, so yeah, it requires no. a turn of setup beforehand, and then hoping that your opponent doesn't respond, and then no, just no Emerus. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's really trashed here. Like, yeah. like I like the idea of it. I do. I like the idea of going, like, Leroy Faceless in for 24 and stuff like that. Exactly. Right? But, like, are you going to survive that long? Uh, I don't know about that. That's going to be... Unlikely. Yeah, I don't know. It's a hunter. Like, I'd rather just put, like, a bunch of rush cards or a bunch, a bunch of charge cards and just kill my opponent away before then, you know? But face I do. is the place. Yeah, honestly, face, man. Smork <laughs> all the way, dude. Taunt is cheap. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, no, like, I'd rather just play a faster Hunter, so I guess this is going to land on the trash tier end of the uh, expansion, but still a cool meme card. I, nothing says I won't try it. I don't know about you, but... I'm definitely I'll, I'll try to find a way to make it work, but... Yeah, it probably won't be as strong, though. <laughs> no, no. Uh, anyway, we're going to the next card. Hold on a second, I gotta click down here. Uh, this is the Warrior Legendary Darius Crowley. 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, rush after this attacks and kills a minion, gain plus 2, plus 2. Um, let me just say something right now. This card, I think this card is pretty strong. I don't, I don't think it's, mm -hmm. I don't think it's mm -hmm. trashed here. I think it's definitely going to see some play. If you can cheat out the card, it's pretty good. Like I was thinking already, like just having a lot of board control techniques with Warrior and running Woe Cleaver with a bunch of rush cards like the Muck Hunter, the five mana five eight, give your opponent. If I can cheat that out somehow, it's like cheating out a better Doom Guard. Maybe gain this out for free, and not to mention there's a Searcher that we saw uh, later. Oh, we'll see them in this card review, but. I think it's decent. For 5 mana, that's not bad, and it also poses a threat. I don't know about you, what do you think? I'm actually really okay with this, and it really promotes uh, Rush Hunt, Brush Warrior, which mm -hmm. I would be a much of a fan of. Great. Kind of like a tempo kind of warrior kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, sure, you have to worry about what you're going to kill and keep Darius alive with, but 4-4 four, four is a pretty good stat line, and even if you trade into a 3, you still end up with 3 health at the end. So... I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I, I I think I think it probably has a lot of potential going forward, and maybe it can be even like even with the woodcutter's axe too. Like that card is going to be. Oh, it, true. Right. Right. Yeah, it could easily buff that up and then abuse it some more. So uh, we'll move on to the next card. So I think this card's pretty decent. Uh, Raven Caller, three mana, two one neutral. Uh, battle cry. Add two one cost minions to your hand. Uh, what do you think about this one? I'll let you take the lead on this one. All right, so at first I thought this was not the best, right? Mm -hmm. Until I recently just, you can run this with the Hunter quest. Right, exactly. Then it, cool. then it becomes a much better option, right? Because you get more one-cost minions, so you're able to trigger that hopefully faster. Right. And then you can, there are a couple deck ideas going around right now, right. plus with the um, Dire Frenzy card. So you can actually oh, okay. take those one one-cost minions, make them stronger, throw three more copies into your deck. So it has a lot of potential. It just yeah. fits into certain decks. 
minion decks. Right. See, here's the thing, though. So the thing I can compare this card to is Igneous Elemental that came out in N'Goro. The 3 mana 2, 3, add the Flame Elementals. Like, that was played mm -hmm. in uh, Quest Hunter as well because it gave you the two one drops. The thing is, Death Rattle is a lot slower than Battle Cry. Uh, yeah. This doesn't have the same stat line. It's not as healthy as that, but you are playing Hunter. You don't care much about the stat line, especially Quest Hunter. You're just looking to complete the quest as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. If my minion, if he just chooses not to attack into it or it doesn't play a minion that I can trade into it for the Ignis Elemental, then I'm not going to get my one drops. This automatically gives me a one drops. This is a plus one when you put it onto the board. I think in the right deck, this is an okay card. I think this is also a great arena card. I think this is like, it's having an overall plus one is generally good. How good these one mana minions are, it doesn't, well, one cost minions are, I, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure, but if you're trying to go for Quest Hunter, I think it's perfectly a fine card in arena as well. I don't think it's a battle on those lines. So I'd say it's got average potential. I, I wouldn't say it's amazing or anything, but you know, if in the right deck, it probably does well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, let's move to the next one. All right. Uh, sound the bells. Uh, two mana powered in card. Echo. Give a minion plus one, plus two. Uh, this card's got. I don't know. I think this card could be deadly, man. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it, like, like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the interaction with it with like Lanessa, you know, because Echo gives you the card back, right? Oh right. I forgot about Lanessa. And I love that card. Yeah. I love Lanessa. So it's like, so it's like, if I go sound the bells uh, onto any of my minions or whatever, let's say I do cast it twice and it repeats back into my hand. Am I just going to get the one sound of the bells when I play Lanessa? Am I going to get the two because I played it again? So I don't know. I mean, I could... That'd be an interesting interaction to check out, actually. Yeah. yeah. A buddy of mine tried to figure it out with uh, getting Lanessa. Like, we tried uh, Lore Walker Cho on the field and then we put uh, Unstable Evolution, one person playing Shaman, and the uh, Lanessa goes through. But the problem with that is if you play Unstable Evolution on anything in Lanessa, it automatically transforms. So it loses that effect like it's a Yogg. Like it's oh, already left the field. Right. So it doesn't actually work. That being said, that's not the same interaction if you just go sound the bells. It doesn't get rid of the minion. It just buffs the minion. So, <laughs> right. And like I was thinking also as well, it's like if even if I cast it on uh, Primal Fin, uh, the Murloc Pr Primal Fin or whatever it's called, it's a two mana one two. It says anything you cast on it, you get back when it dies. Like yeah. Am I going to get multiple copies of this? I don't know. You should get the exact same card back. Yeah, you should. But that's how it would work in like Magic. So rules are weird when it comes to digital game. <laughs> yeah, I guess. We'll have to see how it works. But I think this card has great potential. I don't know about you. Yeah, I really like the idea of buffing minions on your field for Paladin. Especially yeah. with the... There's another card that came out. It only has... It gains lifesteal and taunt when it gets to three power. So Sound of the Bells would work perfectly in a deck with that card as well. Right. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good card. We'll definitely see something in uh, competitive uh, standards for this. Mm -hmm. uh, next is the Warrior Legendary Black Howl Gunspire. A seven mana three eight can't attack. Whenever this minion takes damage, deal three damage to a random enemy, being the opponent's face, being the opponent's minions. Regardless, uh, I don't know what to say about this card. You know. I, like, I like to think that there's a world where I could actually get this off and start, like, pinging my opponent for, like, inf damage and, like, warpathing on the next turn. Like, I'm not sure if he's going to put resources into this card if I play it or... Like, that's my thing about it. I'm not exactly sure. Like, I think there's easy ways to cheat it out. Like, you can easily recruit it with the weapon or the recruit a party, and, like, then you can cheat it out some more with, like, you know, other cards. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you can play Master Oakheart, too. Yeah, I've heard about the Master O card thing, but then you have to wait till nine, right? Yeah. But, like, you could run it in a control warrior type of deck, where you're just tanking up, trying to build up armor, stalling out the game, playing this down, and then with your new hero power, you can just, you know, yeah, keep clearing thinking, the board. Yeah, yeah. And it works then, especially with the new warpath. But the question is, is it too late, right? Right. It. It has potential. We just have to see how the meta goes for that one. Yeah, like the final thing I like to say is like, even if I do play this card, is my opponent going to consider it a threat? And how do you remove this without de without ruining your board? Right? Like, yeah, you, there's but... obviously hard removal, but like you like, I don't know. For a control deck, if you're playing control warrior, you're not worried about dying as much because you're 
controlling the board as it states. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I play 7 mana 3A instead of controlling the board, am I going to be falling too behind? Can I combo with this the next turn? I'm not going to say this is trashed here. I see a lot of people saying this is trashed here, but I'm not going to say it is because, you know, minions that don't pose a threat at the moment, like they can't attack, for example, aren't necessarily bad minions if they have an effect that's posing a threat to turn after. So it has to, you know, something has to fall in a line. Something has to be done if you can't just leave it on the field if your opponent's just going to keep continuously comboing off with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not something that can be totally ignored. Exactly. So, like, maybe it's going to see a control warrior list coming out with something like this that abuses it and has to be answered, but it's not like their win con. It's just something that they have in their deck. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll see how it works out. Next card. Uh, cheap shot, two mana, rogue card, echo, deal two damage to a minion. I'll let you talk about this one first. Um, hmm. It's a nice cheap spell. I like Miracle Rogue, so it fits in there quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we already have backstab, so it's not the best replacement. The echo cost is nice. It's a nice addition. You're paying two extra mana for the echo in that case. Mm -hmm. But... Six mana, deal six damage to a creature is meh. Yeah, in my opinion. I mean, the 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 added benefit is that it's it's allowed to be split damage, not just the one damage. That right? that is true, but by the time you're at that six mana level, it will probably be one big thing that you want to remove, right? Right, exactly. My my. Current like my thoughts on the card before was like it's kind of meh, but I can see like even just a deck with like a, a miracle rogue deck that's running just gadgets and like shares and corpse flower for example can abuse this, and just play one copy. You don't have to play two. It's not like something that's super amazing, mm -hmm. since it repeats itself anyway. So there's obviously could just be moments where you're like, okay, I'm just gonna start clearing board now. I'm gonna start doing damage, reviving my shares and corpse flower, drawing cards, whatever works. You know, like that could see. You know, I I wouldn't put it behind him to put something like that in the into in like a deck or something like that. But I wouldn't see more than one copy uh, at all. I think I don't think it's a terrible card. I I just don't think it's strong enough to to merit two copies in a deck. That's fair, and I did forget about the interaction with Sherazan, which yeah. would put it back in Miracle, which I am a fan of. <laughs> yeah, I think Sherazan was like a, it was an annoying card to deal with, especially when I was playing against. I was like, oh god, I, I hate this card because every time I'd like clear it off, they'd be like, "Here's gonna draw six <laughs> cards, revive it, and deal with it again." I'm like, "Damn it! Even if I clear it, he's gonna Damn do it, it. again." <laughs> so yeah, I think it has potential. It's it's fine. Uh, we'll, may, we'll probably see one copy in a deck anyway. So all right. Uh, yeah. Next card. Another rogue card. Six mana, five, three. Rush, death rattle. Draw a combo card from your deck. That's the cursed castaway. Sorry, I didn't say the name first. Um, it's also a pirate. Um, I'll just start with this one. Is six mana too high of a cost for an effect like this? You're not really going to just be playing this card as a statted minion on six mana. You're going to be playing this card to remove a threat and draw a card from your deck. The pirate tag doesn't mean much. Pirate synergy is not around as much anymore after the patches leave. I don't know. I don't think it's a terrible card. I just don't know if it's going to see play because you want to draw a combo card from your deck when Rogue already has so many ways to, to draw cards. What do you think? Um, it's a nice removal at, at the rush. Yeah, the six is a bit much for it. The addition of, if it can stay around, that's the, that's the plus side. So if you don't have to trigger that death rattle immediately and just kill something off small, like a really small taunt. But other than that, I don't really see why you would want this. Exactly I mean, for the same reasons, right? Yeah, I mean, like, drawing a combo card from your deck, if you already have, like, a set amount of combo cards, like, you can see Edwin Van Cleef, you can see uh, SI7 Agent, you can see, uh, I'm not sure what else there is, honestly. Uh, Elven like, Minstrel. Yeah, exactly. So you could probably rate. get, like, there's so many ways, but, like, already talking, like, Elven Minstrel is, like, just another way to draw cards, and both those cards I talked about with combo are minions, so Elven Minstrel is just particularly better. Uh, better. So, I mean, like... I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't say this is... I don't know. Maybe if somebody's daring enough, I, I won't play it. <laughs> I have no reason to play it myself. Yeah. Uh, next card. Uh, Witching Hour. Druid cost. Uh, three mana cost card. Uh, summon a random friendly beast that died this game. Uh, 
I theorized with this card, and I concept just just like a little bit of a theory behind a deck that would include uh, boars, splinter graphs, uh, and uh, like grizzlies, witching hours, uh, buffs, savage uh, savage roars, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think it's actually a bad card. I think this card, even like there's not a lot of strong beasts out there, but like even if you get a grizzly back out as a 312 for like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. And like you, there's even combo potential just to revive a boar, get that charge in, then Savage Roar for the extra damage on top of whatever you had. Like, I think there's potential in the card. I, I'm not going to discount it. I already like made a deck around this card, so I, I'm going to be <laughs> playing that for sure. Um, but... <laughs> What do you think? Kind of interested in what that deck is. But, I'll, um, I'll send you a link, buddy. It's great. I'll, I'll send you a link. It's amazing. Yeah, please do. All right. Um, because it's a friendly beast, yeah, it, it increases the chances that you get what you want. So it's exactly getting back that exact um, grizzly if you really want it, or you can really focus down your deck onto what you're building around. Right. But I don't, I don't know where I see play in this. Again, I, I'd love to take a look at that deck, though. I don't see much for Witching Hour just yet. But the 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 deck that uh that I built this around particularly uh was uh also had a key card into it. I'm not sure you probably already seen the card. We are, we're reviewing it today. Um we'll get to it and then I'll I'll tell you exactly how how my how I pictured in my head the deck to work. Um, all right, all right. But let's keep it keep it rolling. Um, next card, uh, Toxmonger, uh, four mana, two, four, uh, whenever you play a one cost minion, give it poisonous. Uh, I think this is a pretty good card. I think poisonous is really threatening. You can also have it with boar. You can have it with elven minstrel, El uh, not elven minstrel, sorry. I'm thinking elven archer, uh, but, uh, elven archer, you have the poison on top. You have the poison from the ping. Like, it has mm -hmm. a lot of clear card. This, this card does pose a threat when played. It's on four mana. Uh, would you play this in Quest Hunter? I don't know. Um, but, like, you know, I'd rather just have Tundra Rhino play out, like, five of the three to swing and draw cards. But it's not a bad idea. It helps with board control, like, if you get, uh, you know, out-tempoed. So it could help. What do you think? One of the other benefits to having this in the Quest Hunter is that all the Raptors you get are one-drops as well. So yeah. if, if you'd be running a Houndmaster, all your... All of them would also have rush, so you get to ping those away as well. So it, it's a nice addition to the quest hunter, I believe. Yeah. It's nice a, removal yeah. for more removal for hunter. I do like the fact that it's a 2 4, like on four, on four man. I do like healthier stats for this kind of effect is correct. If it was a 4 2, I would dead say this card is trash. But <laughs> like, I do like the healthier stats on it. I do think it has potential to stick around on the board, and that's what I want to see. Um, so I'm not going to discount a card. I think the right deck is going to be like perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see what I, happens. I would, I would put this in Quest Hunter. <laughs> All right. Uh, next card. Uh, Cathedral Gargoyle. That's a two mana, two, two Paladin card. Uh, Battle Cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain Taunt and Divine Shield. Now, we've had um, Shielded Minibot before, which is a two mana, two, two mech Divine Shield. And that card was annoyingly strong. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was really hard to remove because of the divine shield and the two damage was just really annoying in general because it cleared a lot of the early game and or swung at you for two every turn unless you removed it. Um, this card is stronger because it has the taunt, which means that it could protect your minions as well. Um, with the added benefit of everything that Shield and Minibot had, back in the mm -hmm. but back in the day, Shield and Minibot was good because most of the card potential pool wasn't as amazing. Um, like now, you have like Righteous Protector, which is just a one mana. You don't have to have any condition. It's just a one mana, one one Divine Shield taunt. So you're losing the plus one plus one out of the stats, but you can also like you had Rallying Blade to buff it. That's rotating out. That's not the point. The point is, is that a Shield and Minibot, Minibot uh, with taunt. But you have to hold a dragon in your hand good enough for today's meta. Uh, what do you think? Uh, if we were keeping the card that lets you discover a dragon if you're holding a dragon in, I'd be much more happy about it. Yeah. Right now it's coming in when it, that card's getting rotated. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it sets up something further down the line where we get like um we get yeah. we can go back to that whole dragon archetype yeah. and see that in Paladin. That's what my hope is that this yeah. is just setting up as it is right now. To build a deck around the dragons enough, eh, especially in Paladin, not really gaining that much. 
Man, you know, I wish we still had, like, Dragon Consort or whatever, man. That would be so <laughs> broken. And, like, oh, my God, the discounts and then this. And I'll be like, oh, my. I'd just be absolutely destroying my opponents with that deck. But in Wild, this is going to be amazing, maybe. Exactly. So, like... Oh, can't wait to see Dragons in Wild. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Paladin in Wild. Dude, I lost to it in an actual ranked match once. I was like, what is... This is not a deck. You can't do this to me. I'm trying real oh, hard gosh. here. You bring this to me. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I don't know. I don't think it's good enough. I think further down the line, you are correct. I think it's going to be better. I think that's where they're trying to push. Like the the idea of a first set, especially in a brand new year, is to not a high level power level card. Everything else is supposed to synchronize later when the new sets yeah. keep getting revealed, and everything at the end becomes really powerful. Um, exactly. So that's the whole idea of like the very first set of the year. And trust me, I would love to see dragons in all decks. Yeah, dragons. That's are, just fun. Dragons are cool, man. I really wish that we had like a paladin legendary dragon. It would have been much better. I would have definitely yeah. tried something with it, but no. Yeah. Um. Next card, uh, Dusk Fallen Aviana. It's a five mana three seven. First card each player uh each player plays each turn costs zero. So people were comparing this card to Temporis. It's basically like getting a free card, but it's not like the actual free turn like that you would get from Temporis. But then again, you're giving the opponent initiative to do something. Uh, Millhouse Mana Storm was a two mana four four discounted all the spells in your opponent's hand to zero. So your opponent could straight up just play every single spell in his hand. Which was really strong and probably not a good idea. Um, not a great idea. No, no. not a good oh, idea no. at all. So, uh, <laughs> this does not count. Well, if you play this card, it does not count as the next card gets discounted by zero. That's because this is the first card you've played this turn. Um, mm -hmm. So your opponent does still have initiative when they when you play this card. That being said, I don't think this is the, the Aviana we want in the set, and I think this card is like pretty trashed here, and I don't think anybody's going to be playing this card. Um, I'm hoping we eventually find a way to kind of play it, but maybe. hopefully Unless... like, find it to, like, uh, what was it, Alarm Bot? Yeah, like, I mean... If that's... we had an Alarm Bot swap, that'd be great, because we get to use it first, and then yeah. hopefully get rid of it. Before Man, our opponent does. That's asking a lot. Like, first, there's no... I guess you can naturalize Des Duskfall and Aviana when you Alarma bought it out, but, like, you're already playing three bad cards for a subpar <laughs> combo. So you're like... <laughs> but it's worth the OTK. Yeah, man, it's worth that zero-cost, man, Tarantis. That's what it's worth, you know? Exactly. Oh, my God, that's awful. <laughs> Memes the dream. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say trash here. I don't think this is gonna be good. Yeah, unless you want to live the meme, I guess, but you won't see me trying it. <laughs> um, next card, uh, Witchwood Grizzly, uh, five mana, three, twelve, taunt, battle cry, lose one health for each card in your opponent's hand. Uh, the lose one health does not count you for losing health. That is the actual card. When I first read this card and I thought, oh, I lose the health for how many cards? That's that's insane. I'll play this in every deck. <laughs> I'll play a 5 minute 3 12. I'll lose the health. I don't care. Even if All I kill day, myself. Day. Exactly. Even if I kill myself, I don't care. I just want to slam that big body on the board. Nope. Um, Deal this with is, it. I dare you. Yeah, exactly. This was the... I do believe with the rush mechanic and the echo, can, uh, echo mechanic being involved... Uh, they're trying to push aggro kind of off the surface, I guess, because uh, yeah. especially with this card, this is a great anti-aggro card. Uh, I think this is definitely a tech card that anyone, if you're facing too much aggro, can play against, and it's just it, it, it is ridiculous how how strong this card is just against those decks in general. If you play against a control deck, obviously this card is not as good, um, but if you can cheat out the way without losing any of its health, it's pretty amazing like i said with witching hour um this card would be in that deck as well because the 312 is just ridiculous um mm -hmm. that stat line is just absolutely absurd for what a five mana card costs um but yeah what do you think um in decks like warriors and hunters which have a tendency to end up end up with empty hands it's especially great because then you get more of that value right but if, if you're in a rush deck i would actually try running this for a bit because the idea is you can trade better, but your opponent won't be able to respond by getting through your big, your big empty-handed taunt. So I see potential. Um, I'd love to run it in those decks. Um, not in hand druid, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But... Well, this is one of your opponent for each card of your opponent's hand, not your hand. 
Oh, it's in your opponent. So that's head. why I, I said, read. yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why I said against aggro. It's amazing because, uh, uh they would, they won't have a hand. They're just trying to push, right? Like they're losing all their card advantage to kill you. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's why it's better in there. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Any thoughts yeah. changed about it now? Good. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the aggro stopper. Definitely the rush stopper. Yeah. Something to put up if you're dealing with those kind of decks. Big body taunts are really strong in this game. Really, really strong. If your opponent has to put more resources just to get to you, which that's amazing. Um, so definitely has a lot of potential. Uh, we'll move to the next card. Um, warrior card, epic, deadly arsenal, six mana. Reveal a weapon from your deck. Deal its attack to all minions. Uh, compared to... Uh, is it called Dragonfire or something like that? Uh, Dragonfire Potion? No, no, Dragon's Fury. Oh, uh, okay. That's the one where you reveal the spell, cost the spell, mm -hmm. deal damage. Um, this is for Warrior. The only thing I can honestly think of, like, if it was the cost of the uh, weapon, uh, it would be better. Uh, because then you could have, like, you know, uh, the Razor, which is four. You could have the the Recruit Weapon, which is eight. But no, it's the deal the attack to all minions. I don't think that's as good. Uh, maybe later? I, maybe? Maybe. I can't think of a big weapon in Warrior right or now. Howl is the only one. Uh, um, how much? Or seven attack. So, mm. And you don't want to run more than one of those. So I don't think that unless, you know... That's the thing. Gore Howl is the liter like, literally the only one. If uh, Arcanine Reaper, I guess. If you want a six mana deal five to everything. <laughs> But, like, are you focusing really on the weapons and stuff like that? Like, I think in, in WoW, people were talking about, like, Hobart, the hammer guy who, like, upgrades all your weapons in your deck as well. Like, that could work. Yeah. But that's in WoW. That's going to... Because it's all rotating out. So, right now, not strong. I don't think this is strong. Further down the line, Further kind of thing. Further down the line, probably, when they release bigger weapons. Yeah. Uh, next card. Woodcutter's Axe. So, we're talking about this in Rush Warrior. Uh... Two mana... Uh, two attack and two durability. Uh, Death Rattle give... Plus two, plus one to a random friendly uh, rush minion, meaning the rush minion has to be on the field. This is not on a hand buff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think this is like the the new fiery win axe because it's like really <laughs> good. Um, we finally got it back, boys. Yeah, exactly. It took, <laughs> it took this long, man. Man, when they did that nerf, I was like, oh man, it's never going to see the light of day ever again. How dare they? What am I going to do with my free golden fiery win axe? <laughs> Um, it's okay, we're back now. It's okay, we're back now, man. Now I gotta craft golden ones of these. Um, no, but this is good in Rush Warrior. I think this is like, again, with the combo potential of just having uh, any kind of Rush minion on the deck, the plus two, plus one is strong, even with Darius Crowley that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And like, the early game removal is actually pretty good. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be seeing... Uh, the only My only quirk with it is that uh, a lot of decks have one threes in particular. Um... And that doesn't really help the case of this weapon. Uh, like Northshire Cleric, uh, that's actually... The, uh, well, actually, a lot of them are rotating now that I think about it. Northshire Cleric is the only one three I can think of right now. There was Malkazar's Imp. Malkazar's Imp's rotating. There was the Nether Spat Historian. That's one three rotating. as well, rotating. And then there was the Valfin Inquisitor, which is one three. It's also rotating. So maybe it's okay, actually. Um, yeah. But like then, again, there's still like the Searchers for Secrets, which was the... I forget what that two mana, two, three uh, mage card was. Um... The epic one, discover a secret. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't discover a secret. It was the uh, like we already have it. The uh, the two mana two three pull a secret from your deck or draw a secret from your deck. Oh, archaeologist. Archaeologist, yeah, like uh, cards True. like cards like that. So this is like on two mana. So if you're comparing about it, if they have like uh, oh mana worm, somebody in chat said mana worm. So mana worm uh, is also yeah. a card. So I mean like, if, but that's like, we already just listed two mage cards. I don't think it's gonna be maybe that big of a problem. But I'd still run this in the. In the I'd run two copies of this in the deck. No, no problem. Like absolutely yeah. no problem. I think it's a good absolutely card. rush warrior. Let's just do it. Yeah, it's we're trading fun. off board. We're beating things with our face. Armor up. It's a, it, we can trade. Yeah, it'll be fine. Anyway, next card. Uh, which is cauldron. Uh, three mana, zero, four. After a friendly minion dies, add a random shaman spell to your hand. Um, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say about this one. What are your thoughts? I've heard varying opinions. Like, yeah, you can go put this in a Burgle Rogue type deck if we ever get to a decent one. Or you can put this into the shaman engine with, you know, Hagatha and 
um, bog shaper and just kind of keep cycling through it that way. Right. Both seem like interesting ideas, but they require a, a lot of setup and which is cauldron otherwise really doesn't do much for you as an O four on three. So, you know, I I'd be interested to see where it goes. Yeah. People are saying like Hunter, like play this and then go unleash the hounds and then trade and get like a, a value back on it. And like, I mean, this is like it, it, the the card I'm comparing this to is like a cult master, but that cards in your deck are better than random cards from shaman. Yeah, and like that's the thing. Like, I don't know if I'd be playing that. Uh, it's it's. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's it, the the worst card I've ever seen. But like shaman spells have to be amazing for you to want them. That's the thing, right? So and shaman spells are kind of all over the place. You have some right. good ones, you have bad ones. You got overload. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I guess if you if you if you really have an idea with the what's up with this card, I, I like go for it. It might see like I mean, it's not a bad stat line for three mana. Like four health is premium for three mana, but like it doesn't do any damage anyway. So yeah. Anyway, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's great, but maybe it has potential. Anyway, I hope to see it somewhere. Yeah, we probably will. Next card, uh, Rat Trap, two mana secret for Hunter. It's an epic. Uh, after you, your opponent plays three cards in a turn, summon a 6-6 six, six rat. This card is strong, man. I think this card is threatening. It is It is very strong. Like, the thing is, if I'm pressuring my opponent already uh, with face damage, my opponent has to clear it some way. If they don't have an efficient clear, they have to use more cards. If they use more cards, they trigger my rat trap, and now they have to deal with a 6-6 six, six rat. That's a that's really strong, man. I don't think that's th that that's something to be joking around with. Because if I can make like if I just drop uh, turn one secret keeper, then I drop rat trap, and they have to get rid of my secret keeper, and they have to do like it might not trigger on turn one and two because you don't have enough money uh, mana to like get rid of the uh, sorry play three cards. But later down the line, a six six is really going to be hard to deal with. Like there might be like a four mana on four on on turn four, your opponent might play three cards, and then because they're trying to fight back on your board state because you're pushing their face, okay. so. I think it's particularly strong. What do you think? You raise a good point. Um, I never thought about it as a as a response to you you bullying your opponent right. and them having to clear you. Yeah. Otherwise, like an aggro deck wouldn't really be playing three cards in a turn necessarily. Right. Uh, it's a good response to control decks too because they're looking to control to control your creatures and have nothing on board. Right. But it's three cards is is a bit difficult in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and especially since you play this and then by the time that it gets to a point where they have that option, they almost definitely know it's rat trap. So yeah, they'll have to limit their turn or limit what they play that turn, but it's easier to play around in a sense. Right. Yeah. So you could say it that. can go either way. Yeah, it can go either way. Yeah, I don't know. Like you'd have to obviously see. I, I like my whole concept was behind it. If you are playing something like a mid range that pushes face damage, but also board clears, like this also synergizes with uh, the spell stone. Spellstone's already strong. We're we're like losing uh, uh, cat trick. So cat trick, like, yeah. yeah. And cat trick was really strong. That just required one spell. Um, but like again, again, a six six rat. Like, and I'll try to build something with this for sure. I, I don't think it's a terrible card. I think it's I think it's a great card, but. It's uh, great when they have coin. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's really good when they have coin. Uh, that's why I was thinking, like, oh, I turn one secret keeper, and then my opponent goes, oh, okay, whatever, hero power, or just uh, pass, or whatever, and then I go, okay, rat trap, and now my opponent needs to get rid of my secret keeper, or whatever. And Yeah, I, I, I theorize a lot, lots of things, but, you know, it, it, it'll probably see play, I think. I don't think. What do you think? I wouldn't mind it. I would like to see it around. Yeah, I don't know if you'd run two of it, though. Maybe. Eh, maybe. Eh, you don't want to see it. No. That's the thing, right? Yeah. But eh, we'll see. As a one of, I'm okay with it. Two. It's pushing it. Is your opponent going to fall for it twice? <laughs> man, you don't know, man. Like in those little <laughs> rankings, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next card uh, Holy Water. It's five mana, rare for a priest. Uh, deal four damage to a minion. If that kills it, add a copy of it to your hand. Uh, so there was a card that came out, I forget what it's called, but uh, it was a two mana, it was convert, that was it. Two mana convert, uh, it just said copy a mini on your opponent's board and add it to your hand, basically. Uh, 
This is five mana. It deals four damage, and if it kills it, it gives you the plus one, or not the plus one, but the even on the card. Mm -hmm. uh, this can also work on your minions as well if you wanted to, let's say, redo a battle cry. But for five mana, that's kind of expensive. I'd rather just keep the stats on the board. Um, what do you think? You know, since I like it, because I've been looking at the priest cards a lot, and I'm seeing some kind of like abusing your opponent's cards kind of theme coming along. Right. And hopefully, like we see more and more of that come together. Right. Um, four damage on a on a spell, not bad. Five mana. Hopefully, you can kill something that's good for you. That's the ideal situation, right? Um, yeah. it could has potential to see play right now, but I wouldn't. I would be. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't either. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you're playing four mana, deal four damage, and one copy, copy. One mana copy, yeah. sorry, right? So like it's just a bundle, right? And that's I guess okay. You might see it in control priest. It's it's definitely got potential there, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh we'll move to the next card. Nothing too interesting in this one, I think. Um Spectral Cutlass, four mana two two. Uh lifesteal. Whenever you play a card from another cut uh class, gain plus one durability. So we were comparing this card to Kingsbane. It's worse Kingsbane, obviously, but if you are playing <laughs> Uh, there are other cards that do support this, uh, stealing cards in another class, uh, like Blink Fox, and there's an Echo card that says steal card from opponent's class. So you can buff this up and could make this pretty good, but the question is, why would I buff this card just because it has lifesteal? Like, I could just play Kingsbane Rogue, you know, leeching poison my Kingsbane Rogue, and then suddenly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing way better because this card doesn't really go away, it just keeps coming back. Um... But, that being said, you can still run the Weapon Searcher, you can still search this out if you're playing the Steal the Opponent's Class Cards quests, or not the quest, but the, uh, like, deck, and, uh, this card sucks if you're playing against the Rogue, so... <laughs> yes, very much. So, yeah, I mean, Lifesteal is kind of, like, it's a good tag, and it can be searched with the Countess, um, which is pretty good, so, I don't know, maybe, I mean, if you're playing that deck, you're gonna be playing this card. Uh, what do you think? Um, again, I like the Burgle Rogue idea. Of course, it, yeah, again, it does suck if you play against another Rogue. Yeah. So if everyone's playing Burgle Rogue, then <laughs> no one's going to be playing Burgle Rogue. Yeah, that's the, that's so, the conundrum, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as much as I like it, I still prefer Kingsbane, but Kingsbane lost a lot of support. Yeah, it did. Will this, will this be able to take its place? Depends on what becomes the popular. If this ends up as a Tier 3 deck, then it has a chance of being good, yeah, maybe, or at least consistent. It's a deck that More I consistent. Yeah, it's a deck that I really wanted to try, but like, when you say it's like consistent, that's the thing. Stealing people's cards is not consistent. That's the most it's inconsistent. Not consistent. Thing. <laughs> like I'm gonna get like the most useless card. Like I'm gonna get like Totemic Might if I play against a Shaman. I'm gonna be like, okay, for zero mana, game one durability, like. You know, like, I, that's the thing, though, right? Like, it depends on the class you're playing against, right? And, and yeah. if you play against a rogue, it's useless. So it's like, you know, if somebody has the same smart idea as you, you're going to be like, well, this is awkward, just stealing each other's cards, and you're like, I'm just playing my class. It's like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, is that rogue card that discounts um, non-rogue cards in your hand still in rotation? Or is it getting rotated? Uh, is that the Ethereal Peddler? That's the five mana five six discount like all oh, cards that were in your hand by two, I believe. Something like that. Like, uh, it might be getting rotated. Cause I think it was the uh it was from Gadget Zan. Ah, uh, it was Karazan. Yep, so that's gone. Oh, yep, Karazan. okay. Yeah, that I mean we still have Lillian Voss, if you care enough about Lillian Voss. But her effect is to replace your hand, right? Yeah, but I you mean, have no hand. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a replace a number of spells, right? So, yeah. yeah. But I think so. I think this type of deck is going to be a lot more value oriented. Yeah, with tests and it has. I'd like to see where it goes. I want to believe in Burgle Rogue. Yeah, I want to believe in it too. Uh, next card, uh, Swift Messenger, a four mana two six. Uh, rush each turn. This is in your hand. Swap its attack and health. So, this has like this is following the Worgen theme. Uh, so it's like, uh, 
each turn, even when you read or draw it, it switches into the 6-2 or the 2-6. Rush is a particularly strong uh, mechanic. People are saying play this in Summoner Priest because uh, it's like it just falls within that temple swing and it has like that ability just to control the board with a high health total or just take out a big minion with a six attack but the idea of waiting a turn just to get whatever you want is like a whole turn is a lot of like it's 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 pretty big to wait a whole turn right if i wanted to wait a whole turn i'll just play uh temporis and let my opponent do it and then i'll just wait on the turn i want to play my cards right um what do you think um I've thought about this one for a while, especially these worgen type cards, and I want to see if they can find a home in like combo priest, just to see as a you can they have good health, right? So you should be able right. to trade into them, hopefully keep them alive, keep the board clear, and then find something later to do with them with the combo cards. If not, you can fall back on Lady in White just to make. If this if Swift Messenger comes out on eight, you hopefully have Lady in White on six. So then you get a rush six six, which is way better for four mana. So I'm hoping that you can find some kind of balance in that. Other than that, four mana do six damage to a minion. It's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, like the thing you put up a good point, but like you can also just play a Stormwind Knight, which is just a four mana two five. Like, you lose the plus one health, but, like, it just has charge, so you can just kill your opponent out, right? Like, yeah. That's the thing you could do. Like, I understand where you're coming from, and I think, like, it could pose a threat, but I'd rather just kill my opponent, right? That's fair. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it, it, but I do I do like the whole Lady in the White concept. Like, having just a four mana 6-6 six, six is pretty strong. You just be able to clear any board and have the stat line to, you know, survive as well. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Rush Warrior can use this card, maybe? Because it's missing that four mana Rush card, so... I don't know. We'll see. You know, this plus um, Woodcutter's Axe would be pretty fun. Comes a 4-7. Yeah, that's pretty strong, actually. Maybe yeah. Have to try it or out. Or an 8-3. Yeah. Huh. Oof. <laughs> Oof. All right. Um, next card, Gilnane Royal Guard. 8 mana, 3-8. Has Divine Shield, Rush. Each turn this is in your hand, swap its attack and health. So same thing with the Warrior cards. Um... I'm not sure if eight mana is is good enough. Like I died because it's it's a whole eight mana. Like, and divine shield's nice. I get it, but like, I don't know. I, I can't get behind it. I can't because it's it's just it's too much of a high cost. I understand like has lots of potential to just to clear a big minion or clear multiple minions with divine shield. Like it's just. Uh, that's my thing about it, right? It's, it has like more health than it actually should have, and Divine Shield lets a free clear happen, and then you just left with an eight three, which has to be answered. But on eight mana, any three health guy can probably be answered. What do you think? Yeah, but on on the other side of yeah, if you want to use this as the eight three, you have to wait until turn nine to actually do it. Yeah, you get to trade into something, then your opponent gets to remove it. So I guess you get to remove two cards essentially. Um, so in that sense, it's not bad, but for an eight drop. It, it doesn't give you enough in terms of board presence. Yeah, the rule of thumb is an 8-drop has to do something immediately as it's played. Like exactly. It has to impact board. This does impact board, but so much that it's not like a super threat, like, you know. Yeah. Especially on 8 mana, right? Like It's definitely something your opponent will want to get rid of, Yeah. but at, at 3 health on turn 9, it wouldn't be hard for them to get rid of, really. True. It's very true. Uh, next card, uh, Dire Frenzy. This is a hunter card, four mana. Uh, give a beast plus three plus three. Shuffle three copies into your deck with the plus three plus three. Um, this card is like stupid strong. I think it's like, I think it's ridiculous. I love it. You can go Huffer. Huffer survives a turn. Boom. <laughs> Face. Huffer is now the biggest boy in the game. Yeah, exactly. Three mana. What was it? Three mana seven five. That's ridiculous. You just keep playing three mana seven five swing face. I think there's that uh two drop one three with lifesteal and rush. That's a beast. Yeah. That's new coming in. Then you get three more copies of it for t uh two mana four six with rush and lifesteal. Hunter yeah. can stay alive. I'm not sure. Can you just put this on any card? Like does it have to be a beast? Uh it has to be a beast. Give a beast plus three plus three. 
Yeah, but then it, like it says, give a beast plus three plus three. Period, and then shuffle three, uh, shuffle three copies into your deck with plus three plus three. Or maybe, yeah, it is. Yeah, you're right. I thought it. Yeah, was just, it has to target. Yeah, I was gonna say like, but it can just like shuffle like three copies of like a really really just, like strong card or something like <laughs> King Crush and Katrina all of them out and just. <laughs> um, but yeah. Or I think you can put this good. on Queen Carnassa and yeah. get three eight eights. <laughs> <laughs> so in your like deck more that, one ones exactly one three twos that's incredible i will never be decked again yeah exactly this is this yeah, that's a lot of it's a lot of value i think this card's amazing i think it's gonna yeah. see some play for sure can't wait to get that it's yeah. not a common yeah it's pretty good i like it. it's comments on an epic thank god <laughs> uh, uh next card uh blood witch it's a four mana three six warlock card at the start of your turn, deal one damage to your hero. This card synergizes with other cards in particular, um, not just by itself. Four mana three six is not bad stat value. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually four mana three five is the biggest thing you can compare it to, like a Tuzdingo, which is just Shunjin Shield Master. Everyone calls it Tuzdingo now. <laughs> Tuzdingo. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, this synergizes with other cards. Uh, Amethyst, uh, other cards we're going to be revealing. Uh, uh, what else does this synergize with? Uh, it's mostly just Amethyst, right? Yeah, it's just Amethyst. Just Amethyst right now and those two new cards we got. Yeah, exactly. But those two new cards are pretty good. And, like, this stat line's good. I like it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I I mean, yeah. I, I could see it in, like, sort of like a tempo-ish Warlock lifesteal thing going on. I, I, I think it's I think it's fine. 4 mana 3-6 is a strong stat. So, what do you think? 4 mana 3-6... I'm like I'm a okay with it. Same stat line as um, Houndmaster, for example, and that is I feel like that has a great stat line. Yeah, sure you take one damage to your hero, but you can build around that Amethyst, uh, those two other cards which we'll get to. So I have no problem with this. Right. Yeah. I think zoo? it's I think it's good. Maybe, maybe, maybe like a life steal yeah. like zoo or whatever. Uh, yeah. That being said, our next card though. Life. Yeah, three mana two four. Dusk Bat. Uh, it's a common for Warlock. Uh, Battle Cry if your hero took damage this turn, summon two 1-1 one, one bats. Uh, so there was the Skullmancer or whatever. I'm not sure. It was the 4-mana 2-4. Basically same thing. Summon two 1-1s. One, uh, mm -hmm. That was on 4-mana though. Uh, this is on 3-mana. So you'd play the 1 extra discount by just saying, oh, okay, if, if my hero took damage this turn. That being seen, if I just like life tap and I'm on 5-mana, I play this card to get two 1-1s. One, In Zoo, this could possibly see play. You can also just go like Cobalt Librarian as well on, on four mana, uh, or Flame Imp. Uh, what do you think about the card? Um, I'm, I'm a okay with it in that whole zoo idea. Flame Imp, Cobalt. Um, you could, if you really, really have to, wait till five and hero power with it. But overall, the stats are fine. You get a two one ones. Get your board nice and wide. Yeah. Yeah, you got you can you can go places with this one. Yeah, possibly. We'll see how it works out in Zoo. Uh, next card, uh, Dull Master Dorian, five mana legendary, two two six. Whenever you draw a minion, summon a one one copy of it. Uh, this card I think is just like, I think if you can just combo this off in any particular deck. It's like ridiculous, just like actually ridiculous. People are saying, "Oh, like roll the bones, rogue, with a bunch of death rattles. Play this, roll the bones, draw all your cards, draw the cards, and summon the one ones with the death rattles." Um, <coughs> you can go on ten mana, doll master, Dorian, nourish, draw three. Uh, you can also go on branching pass on nine mana, draw two cards. Uh, there's like, I, I think. This card, I mean, people are saying also this is a new Barnes. This is not new Barnes. This, this <laughs> is like discount, like bargain bin, like Barnes. But like, because Barnes budget just, Barnes. yeah, it's just budget Barnes, I guess. But it's a legendary. Um, yeah. But it's not, it's not like, it's definitely not Barnes, but I think it's still pretty strong. What do you think? Um, I'd like to see it on turn eight. Rogue, you can do El um, it into Elven Minstrel. Guarantees you two one ones. But. It, you'd have to build a deck around those one ones to see what you can actually value off of it. Yeah, like you, that, that would yeah. be the interesting thing. Because if you get a Elven Minstrel off of the Elven Minstrel again, then what did you really win? Yeah, not no. much. Like if you if you if you put this card into your deck, you built it around it. Like that's the thing, right? Like you, you yeah. definitely built it so like, oh okay, I'm gonna plus from this card no matter what, right? You can also do uh, Dollmaster Dorian and uh, 
Book of Spectres, the two mana draw three. If any spells or whatever, you discard them or whatever. That's a seven mana combo, but it draws you three minions. If you're playing, yeah, we seem to be getting that minion mage kind of archetype coming through, which I wouldn't mind seeing. We'll see, but like elementals seem like the only cause of like effect there, so I'm not sure. We'll see. I think the cards, I think the cards good, definitely has potential. Uh, Mage legendary, six mana, five, five, Toki, the time tinker. Uh, Battle Cry, add a random legendary minion from the past to your hand, from the past meaning wild format, any legendary. Uh, that's very mean, man. That's like super mean. Like, you can get any, like, dude, imagine like facing a, like, Ragnaros again or a Sylvanas and you're like, oh my god, dude, not again, yo. I thought we were past this. It should, it should have been like six mana, five, five, Battle Cry, add ice block to your hand. <laughs> now <we're gonna> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ice block will never die. Yeah, exactly. You can't kill it, dude. Um, yeah. What are, What are your thoughts on it? I think it's very mean potential, though. Uh, like I've seen some stats on it. And people did the math. We were like, there's a forty percent chance you get a bad card. Sixty yeah. percent chance you get a a thirty percent chance you get a playable card, and then the rest is like a, a good legendary. Right. But um, it it. It's, I can see it on the clickbait titles. You won't believe what Toki the Time Drinker got me this game yeah. and let me win. Exactly. Well, you can yeah. definitely just play it in like a uh, control mage, though. You can just play it like as a value card. And like past legendaries always seem to be, you know, um, some people are really glad that most of them rotated out. I'm like, are there any uh, like particular mage ones that uh, are good? Like, because if you're playing control mage, you'd want to like synergize with like other mage cards i'm not sure exactly which cards got rotated out into wild format from mage like i know there's like flame leviathan and i'm not sure what else there was i am not too sure myself but it's any legendary minion too eh? right yeah i know that's what i'm just saying like if you play mage in particular right because it's a mage card. yeah like is there anything that synergizes that well but i don't know i think it's i think it's a cool card I, it probably will see play uh in a control mage because like why not I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'll play Why it not? for the memes, I guess. Uh, but you're not yeah. playing Ice Block anymore. Like, I wish it just said add Ice Block. That would have been better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a meme card. Keep but, Quest Mage alive. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully it adds something uh, amazing to the people playing his hand. Um, next card. Uh, Voodoo Doll. Three mana, one, one. Battle Cry, choose a minion. Death Rattle, destroy the chosen minion. This card's nuts. Like, what? Why the Absolutely purpose? insane. Like, I'm Frostless Jaina. Okay, ping your guy. Or, sorry, choose your minion. He's gone. Ping my own doll. Get a 3-6 elemental. Your guy's dead. What? Okay, I'm, I'm Warlock now. Check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and take your guy, or I'm gonna choose your guy, then gain a life and, uh... Uh, destroy your minion like what that's not very fair like why why was that printed or like i i don't know man i think that's ins uh, this card is insane like what this is gonna I, play in a lot of things man man i love this card a yeah. great controller removal you can use it in so many ways yeah, uh, like warriors whirlwind or just their hero power when they're scourge lord garrosh or like <laughs> like pff, man that's insane this card's amazing that, that's all that needs to be said man it's just good. first day craft yeah absolutely <laughs> Uh, Druid Legendary, Splinter Graft. Uh, 8 mana, 8, 8. Choose a friendly copy minion. Uh, friendly, I can't speak. Uh, Battle Cry, choose a friendly minion. Uh, add a 10, 10 copy to your hand that costs 10. So just a 10 mana, 10, 10. Uh, it has to be pretty amazing for you to want to get a 10, 10. 10 mana, 10, 10. Uh, mm -hmm. so... The deck I was building, I actually kind of revolved around this while having board. That's the best combo I can see out of this card. So just adding a 10 mana, 10, 10, charge your opponent's face for 10. Um, okay. Yeah, so like that was the whole idea. And it's easy to do because you can play both cards at the, sa at the same turn. Um, and I don't think it's a terrible card. I think it's going to definitely see. You want to like copy it on something that's actually going to impact the board. And that would be threatening as a 10 mana, 10, 10. Um, I'm not sure what other cards there would be. You can go Seer Knight Chain Gang, I guess, if, if it survives, and then you just get two 10-10 Chain Gangs. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Chain Gang is the only one that really appeals to me, because then you get double the value out of it. Right. Yeah, people always talk about the boar, but play 10 mana for a 10-10 boar, you, that's just something you want to hit face with, clearly. Yeah. Um, and that's all you're going to do that turn. Yeah, it's 10 damage, but it it's telegraph. You have to set it up the turn before. Right. So if they have a taunt, they throw it on the taunt. Oh no, my plan is ruined. Yeah, exactly. You have to sit on it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
Yeah, definitely have to see how it works. Now, my thing is, is like, if it goes, uh, no, I guess it would be, I guess it wouldn't be the same card. Like, if you went Witching Hour with the board and the 10 mana, 10 times, that count as a different card? Does it come back as a 10 mana charge? I don't think so. I think it would just come back I... as the board, right? Ooh. That's interesting. It should just come back as a boar, but that'd be an interesting interaction. Hmm. Maybe. I think when cards are got, are destroyed and go to the graveyard, though, they go back to their original cost. Right. So probably not. Yeah, probably not. Uh, I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this card. Uh, rogue card, two mana, pickpocket, uh, rare, echo. Add a random card uh, to your, to your hand from your opponent's class. So this essentially means on ten mana, I can go plus five with this, or really plus four with this, and <coughs> it's like. You know, for the Burgle Rogue-ish archetype that people want to play, and I even want to play, and Blackstar <laughs> wants to play. Uh, what are your yes. <laughs> Again, I love Burgle Rogue. I want to see it succeed. I just yeah. don't want everyone to play Burgle Road because then we all cry. Um, yeah, it's true. So, yeah, I'm I'm here for the support. It's nice to see them like try to focus Rogue in this direction rather than the it, it keeps the cheap cost spells theme which right. is which is like the current thing of rogue mm. but we're going down this burgle path which i feel like sticks to a whole rogue idea of what a rogue is right. so it'd be nice to keep going down this path see what happens yeah. right now though yeah. it probably won't see much play see, for the uh, ca reasons of the other cards yeah see rogue in particular like their biggest crutch and which Blizzard doesn't want to like actually address is the fact that most of their decks are all around like a gadgets and auctioneer, like yep. because they have all these cheap spells that they can just loop and then draw a bunch of cards and they have preparation, they have backstab yep. and like all those cards and that's the problem with the with the rogue archetype in particular. Um, but they are trying to push it in another direction and I do appreciate that. This is deck definitely a deck I'm dodging day one. Because I know people are going to be like, oh, yeah, Burgle, Burgle Rogue. rogue. Yeah. Go, and then on the ladder, they're just matching up against each other, and I'm like, Burgle yeah, rogues. hard pass, dude. You can steal my cards. Okay, I'll just go face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think for the for the archetype that it's meant to be played in, it's a pretty good card. Probably run two of these, because uh, you might not want to play it on, like, turn 10 always, but, you know, getting those two class cards is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, next card, 8 mana, 3, 4, Silver Sword, rare for Paladin. After your hero attacks, give your minions plus 1, plus 1. Uh, probably slow? Most likely slow? Uh, my whole thing was, is like, okay, I saw Cathedral Gargoyle or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I was, I saw this weapon, and I was like, man, where's the middleman for that? And I was thinking to myself, Eben Dragonsmith, man. Can you go? You have the Evan Dragsmith in hand. You have yeah. the Silver Sword, and you go Evan Dragsmith. Did this count this on turn six? I'm playing this. It's a six mana three four, and then I buff all my guys. Um, but then I'm missing the turns three and five, and I don't know what to do with those. And I don't know. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna really see play. It's too slow. I think it's too slow. Um, see, I thought it was too slow, but then Vine Cleaver kind of sort of worked, right? Yeah. And yeah, sure, it refresh the board, but this sticks more to the whole I'm buffing everything on the board type of paladin. Right. So it has the potential, especially with four uses. Right. Um, but that depends on how well control sticks. If control's board clear with a lot of the other cards becomes too good, then there's no reason that this even exists for paladin. Right. I mean, maybe in a control paladin if you really want to push it. Probably. True. Uh, anyway, next card, uh, Mist Wraith, 4 mana, 3, 5, whenever you play an Echo card, gain plus 1, plus 1. Uh, we already seen multiple Echo cards for, uh, Rogue. Uh, you know how much I wish they had just, like, a 0 mana epic, uh, Echo card that, like, deal, deal 2 damage to, uh, uh, undamaged minion, like, backstab, but, like, Echo <laughs> backstab, that'd be insane. Um, so you can, Busted. you can compare this card to Questing, uh, Adventure. Um, the Questing Adventure had very weak stats for three mana. Yeah. For four mana, three five is pretty decent stats. It's kind of sticky on the board. Uh, it does you know overlay a threat, so you have to get rid of it, or it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger while your your opponent's going to keep stealing your cards or dealing two damage to your minions or whatever. Um, this is only as good as how many times you can play Echo. Um, from the Echo yeah. cards we've seen, 
Uh, it doesn't have to be the class cards or whatever. There's other echo cards, but you're probably not going to play those. The neutrals are kind of meh. Um, you can also play like Face Collector or whatever, that uh, three mana two two whatever add a random legendary. Um, but like for the most part, the best echo cards we've seen for Rogue are the two mana ones, the deal two, the deal two damage and Steel card. Um, so you play this on turn four, on turn five, you're maximum making it a plus two plus two, which would leave it at a four seven. So four mana four seven on turn five, plus the damage or the cards you've taken, not bad. I don't think it's terrible. Uh, the reason why Questing Adventure didn't see so much play was because of the weak stat line, and, you know, that's why, but this doesn't have a weak stat line. So maybe it just sees plays in most, like, uh, any kind of rogue that wants to use the Echo cards. Uh, it doesn't have to be Burgle Rogue in particular. What do you think? Uh, yeah, you could also consider protecting it. So four, you could use, one second, Phantom Militia. You can drop Phantom Militia twice, get that Echo and the Taunts, down to protect that and bump it up to a 5 7 right. for next turn. Right. So, unfortunately, that's a 10 mana play. It does get you three three cards on board, though. Yeah. So, it has. You can do some interesting stuff with Echo and this. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a decent card, and it's definitely a, a choice to make if you want to play this over some other cards. But mm -hmm. if your deck revolves around it, then why not? It's, it's in the right deck, I'm sure it's fine. Hope we get a lot more buff from Echo cards or things so happen when you Echo. probably see more Echo cards along the line. Uh, Paladin Legendary, the Glass Knight, four mana, four three. Uh, divine Shield. Whenever you whenever you store health, gain Divine Shield. Um, so Silver Moon Guardian, I believe, was the card. The four mana, three three Divine Shield uh, was this comparison to it. Uh, mm -hmm. This card in particular. You know, I see a lot of bad raps about this card, and a lot of cards move out of rotation, uh, like, or sorry, a lot of cards are competing with this card, is what I mean to say, is uh, Called Arms, and they even want Blessing Kings, or you want True Silver because you're losing Rallying Blade, because uh, it rotates out. Um, is this good enough to just stick into an aggro deck? Is this good enough to stick into a control deck? You know, uh, Divine Shield is, is like a safe bet to just stick a minion on the board. If you're behind, it's not a safe bet, but if you're already ahead on board, it's not a bad card, I would say. Uh, I don't think it's amazing, but like, I think it still has potential. Uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. um, I can see this in like a control paladin type thing, right. um, where you're looking for Uther, you get in that lifesteal, hitting face, then you can also trade with Divine Shield. Um, you're looking to complete the quest, um, not the quest, the using the hero power to your full advantage, right. and especially with... Um, the minion, the new minion that allows you to refresh your hero power, so you can like try to focus into that kind of control. Right. But outside of that, just looking to protect your board and control. That's all, that's the only place I see this right now. It's a fair card. That's the problem. I need broken cards. This is a fair card. <laughs> right? It's too fair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe down the line it's gonna be nuts though. Who knows? Uh, next one. Uh, four mana, three four. Bell Ring Sentry for Paladin. It's a rare card. Battle Cry and Death Rattle put a secret from the uh, from your deck into the battlefield. Mysterious Challenger 2.0. It's uh, like a really dumbed down version. Um, but Mysterious Challenger was underrated like ridiculously when it was played, man, and just made a Christmas tree on your hero portrait. And you're, like, <laughs> your opponent had like almost no way to deal with it, and they're like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. What do I do with all this? Yeah, you think it's over, but then he drops another one after you've cleared it, and you're like, god damn it, I lose. Um, is that going to be as strong as, as – uh, is this card going to be as strong as that? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, like, we only got one new secret to set, and I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping to see at least two. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the you're playing with just classic secrets. There's no secret that sticked around. Uh, Didn't we? Was Getaway Kodo? That was... Uh, Getaway was Kodo was sticking in. Oh, no, we were losing Getaway Kodo. Yeah, it was you're right, right. And, Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, like, with Getaway Kodo is, is not bad. You get to, like, keep doing it, right? But... You'd have to stick secret into your de into your deck as well. So if you're okay with that, like you play to play like that, I like the effect that it's gonna stagger itself. By stagger itself, I mean uh, you don't want this to have the battle cry like same thing as mysterious challenger where you get get down and you get redemption. So when you get down, get the trigger, you just get the get down guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if you get redemption on this, you're getting another secret, right? If you get the get down, you're protecting this. You know, I do like that effect that it's a battle cry and death rattle, not just battle cry put secrets onto the field. 
Um, it was a lot better with Mysterious Challenger because you had Avenge, which Avenge was just stupid. Like, one mana give 3 2 to a minion when they die, and you have to get yeah. down with Redemption, and you're like, oh my god. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, maybe further down the line, when hopefully to get more of these Paladin secrets. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I'll try something. We'll see. Um, next card, 7 mana, 6 6, Worgen Abomination, rare neutral, uh, not rare, sorry, epic neutral. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to all other damage minions. I guess you can compare it to Baron Geddon, but it's only damage minions. Uh, its stat line yeah. kind of sucks, but like the board clear is pretty good. You can see it maybe in, in Warrior, because you can go like Whirlwind and play this and then just deal a bunch of stuff, build a bunch of damage, because that's the idea, right? You want to damage all your opponent's minions and then just clear it for three. It's like mm -hmm. sleep with the fishes, but like worse. Uh, <laughs> That's but, what we've always wanted. Yeah, if you, if you want a word and abomination, sure. I mean, it's the end of a turn effect, so you want to get real spicy, you put like uh, Jakari, whatever, I think it's Enchanter or whatever, the end of the phase go twice. You just mm -hmm. deal forward everything, but like that's just too spicy. Uh, I don't know, what do you think? Um, I could see a place for it if you can squeeze it into that uh, control warrior where you're running Black Howl. And then you're just looking to damage everything, put this down, it damages everything again, triggers the black hole. But outside of that, board clear? If you really if you could really like manage that up there, well that's about it. Yeah, I mean it's stats and a board clear, so it's it's not yeah. bad. And it's not like a battle sorry, a battle cry or like a death rattle, it's just an end of a turn effect, which is a lot stronger in a certain situation. If it sticks around. Yeah, exactly. True. Um, I'm not gonna discount it. I think maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. I can't really. I don't want to be like Trump or like say like it's a one star card or nothing. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, Town Crier, one mana, one two, epic for warrior. Battle Cry, draw a rush minion from your deck. That card's power level is like ridiculous. One mana, one three would have been nuts. This card is just a draw a card, particular card from your deck. Yep. Um. So like you just it's like a search engine and it's just on one mana. Warrior doesn't really have a good one mana card, uh, and this is just a good one mana card. So I think it's really good for warrior, especially in a rush warrior, and I, especially in a rush warrior. Yep. Yeah. So I think You're it's just just a good card. It's a great card. Just looking for more value and yeah, let's drop this on turn one. You get another rush. Hopefully you get a rush to play on turn two or three. Exactly. I it's think just it's, great. It's just a good card. It's fun. Yeah. I like it. Who doesn't like drawing cards? Exactly. Drawing cards is. Pretty valuable. Um, next card. Four mana, two, three. Totem Cruncher. Epic for Shaman. Uh, Battle Cry. Destroy your totems. Gain plus two, plus two for each destroy. This is a taunt, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Um, so, say you play on turn three. You totem up. Your opponent doesn't kill it. So, on turn four, you're getting Yeti plus taunt. Is that good? You also lost a totem. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess you can like play that primal ta talisman card that says, like, when you die, it like gives you another totem, and then you can like eat a bunch of it. But then, like, again, you're still losing stats to gain more stats on one card. And if that card gets somehow removed by a polymorph or whatever, or whatever, like an execute, like, it, that doesn't seem too amazing. I could be wrong about the entire card, but I don't know. What, what do you think? It'd be interesting to see a deck built around massing totems, destroying them, getting out a huge taunt, but I don't really see the follow-up to it. This card could have been I don't insane. see the win condition for that deck. This card could have been literally insane if it just said for each totem you had a game plus two or plus two. I would have been like, Yeah. Whoa. I would have been like, whoa, yeah. Jesus, all right, sure, I'll play that. Yeah. Losing your totem seems like a bad trade-off, even yeah. if you do get the big taunt. Lost stats has to have reward at the end. Like, if, if like uh, I played Quest, Quest Rogue, and the idea is you're pulling stats off the board, but later on you're massing a huge amount of stats. Lost mm -hmm. stats on board has to have some word, uh, like reward at the end. The reward for this is plus two, plus two on one card per lost stat or per lost minion, which is the totem. Uh, you can, like, Nightmare Amalgam is a totem. You can play that and lose the three mana three four. You can just play the three mana three four, <laughs> which is just better. So I don't know. True. I don't. Well, know you got that shaman card though. Whenever you cast a spell, you can get a totem, right? Yeah. Get a random totem. Oh no, no, that one's that one was a uh, 
cares, Dan. It's getting rotated out. <laughs> so wild oh, again. Good luck, wild. Uh, go, go, wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, next card: Book of Specters. Two mana, epic for mage. Draw three cards. Discard any spells drawn. Jeez, man. Why are they doing this, man? Like, it's just so strong. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Arcane Intellect draw... Like, no backside Arcane Intellect. Three mana, draw two cards. Two mana, draw three cards. Like, dude, that's just nuts, man. Even if I draw two cards, if I want to play spells in my deck and I draw two cards, that's still a discount of one, and I'm drawing two cards. Like, that's insane. I love it. I love Book of Spectres. Did they, um... just, they just thought, like, how can you make Mage broken? Like... Yeah, sure. Just put Book of Spectres in the deck. That, that's fine, man. Like, whatever. We'll, we're gonna see this 100%. This is gonna go on some mage deck that's gonna be competitive for sure. Um, exactly. What do you think, just in general? Um, I mean, again, who doesn't love drawing cards? Sure, you get have to discard any spells, but then you don't run that many spells, so you limit the amount of spells to what this and hopefully you don't do this into the other copy. Right. But that have a couple board clears and bam. Minion mage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's just nuts. It's just nuts. Oh, my God. All right. Well, can't wait to play with that. Yeah. Uh, so this is the card I was going to try to put into the deck. So I value this card a lot more than more people than most people do. Uh, this is really annoying to get rid of. Uh, eight mana, four, four, splittering, uh, splitting fester root, epic neutral, death rattle, summon two, two, sa uh, splitting saplings, which summon two, one, one. Uh, like, I think, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, but it, there are other saplings, basically. So it starts off, it's, it's 12-12 total stats. It's an 8-mana 4-4, you play it, it dies, it goes into two two twos, which die, mm -hmm. and go into two one ones. So the idea behind the deck was, okay, you play your spitting, uh, you ramp up as a druid, obviously, and you'd play your splitting fester, which is sticky on the board. And amassing this big board of just smaller dudes, because this is incredibly hard to remove, uh, allows you to push for damage with Branching Paths or Savage Roar, with top of the boars, on top of Revival Witching Hour, and then it's not that big of a combo. You have your card draw engine with Ultimate Infestation. You have you can go Oaken Summons for uh, Violet Teacher uh, and get more tokens that way. It's essentially like a long game token druid that will try to find its lethal. But Splitting Fester was like the idea behind it. When I saw this card, I was like, this is so sticky. This is going to like absolutely just like I think it's going to be an amazing card. Uh, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on it? Well, I see the potential in it. At 8 mana, you get. A lot, a lot of staying power on board, which yeah. I love. Um, there's like actually a card ex almost exact, literally exactly like this in Magic, and its staying power even there is quite good. Um, yeah. So I'd be interested to see what we can do with it. Um, we still have cube in here, so we can throw some cubes on that and just start. We can go mad with that. Yeah, it's it's. An, I think it's insane. I think this card is amazing. Um, anyway, uh, next card, uh, Countess Ashmore, 7 mana, 6-6, six, six, legendary, neutral, battle cry, draw, rush, lifesteal, and death rattle card from your deck. Okay, so I heard a couple things from this card. It's pretty good, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. now the card you compare it to is the Curator, which came out in Curator Zan. Uh, same cost, 7 mana, it's a 4-6, but it had taunt. And it gave you a Murloc, Dragon, and Beast from your deck. Uh, so you're, that's a lot harder of a condition to fill, I think, than these ones. Um, but the thing is, it gave you the Taunt. And the Taunt was really important. Um, now, if you're playing a Control deck, I can see this obviously being played just for that huge card advantage. If you're mm -hmm. playing the Control Mirror, you don't want to draw as many cards as you think. Because the Control Mirror goes down usually to Fatigue. Um, yeah. Now... This card in particular, I, I think this is this is a very valuable card. There's a lot of cards, and it's not just a particular... It's not a minion from your deck. It's just whatever has that tag on it, okay? And it has yeah. to have the bolded tag, not just in the text. Um, yes. So this can just pull... People have already, you know, talked about it and said, you know, this can... In Warlock, it pulls the Amethyst, right? The Spellstone that allows you to deal damage and heal for the equivalent amount. Um you know, uh, it can, can add a void lord to your hand. Exactly, it can do lots of things, man, and I think it's a very valuable card. Is it as good as a curator? 
I mean, Curator didn't see that many like that much play. They saw some play. Uh, it was a valuable card, but this is different because the condition is so much easier to fill. Curator wasn't mm -hmm. as easy to fill. Like, okay, I have to stick a Murloc Dragon and Beast into my deck. Unless I have generically good all three categories, I'm not going to do that. Rather, just stick to normal card draw or whatever. This is a lot easier to fill, so this would probably see more play than Curator. Yeah, and I, I would like to see it. Um, you could even run it in... Actually, you can run it in pretty much any deck. Um, people have talked about it in Kingsbane for some mysterious reason. Just, But I would like to see it in some form of Hunter, mm. because it's a nice refill your hand kind of sort of, right. and Hunter needs that probably right. more than a lot of the other decks. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I think it's going to be a valuable card. We'll see exactly what happens with it. Um, I would definitely like to have this day one, though, and uh, yeah. to build something control variant with it. Um, Please. <laughs> next uh, next card. Uh, Mossy Horror. Uh, six mana, two seven. Destroy all other minions with two or less attack. This is Shadow War Horror. It's Shadow War Horror, <laughs> but with the body of two seven. Uh, so essentially it's like, oh, people are like, oh man, two mana, two seven, new meta, right? But it's, it's, the, it's you gotta pay the extra mana if you want the two seven and the battle cry. And it's also your minions and not, you, you know, like just how Shadowwood Horror was and, and we don't have that potion of, uh, or pint size potion. We don't have that anymore. That's rotated out. Oh yeah, we so, lost that. So what mm -hmm. can we do? Now Warlock got something that's pretty good. I can exactly. work with this card. Now we're gonna, we're gonna see that later down the line, but this card in particular, I think his stat line is terrible, but the effect is pretty pretty decent. I'm not going to discount this card. I think this card is going to be a tech card in something. Um, mm -hmm. And it will probably, if any deck is rampant with all those two or less attack minions and doesn't really buff their later game, like this card will just punish those decks. And the two seven stats even helps more against that aggro because it's a very healthy card and has two attack. Um, so that being said, pretty, I'd say, okay card. What do you think? Yeah, definitely a situational card. Um, if you have decks that continue to run Call to Arms, for example, then this is pretty much an auto-include. Right. Uh, yeah, it comes down a bit later, so as long as no insane buffs happen, which is unlikely. Mm. But I definitely like it in that Warrior. I mean, Warlock. Yeah. Um, but does Warlock really need the additional board clear? Probably not. Probably not. That's the thing, too. Yeah. Um... Yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. That's interesting. Uh, sorry. Interesting. Um, Festering Hulk. Uh, five mana, two, seven, warrior card rare. After a friendly minion attacks, gain plus one attack. Uh, so you want to play this when you already have board state, uh, obviously, because, uh, I mean, this also counts itself, by the way. So if it were to attack, it just becomes a three, seven. Yep. And uh, I don't know. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's uh, like it's it's okay, I guess if you're if you really want to push it, it's not bad. It's not bad health total health total for five mana, um, but the the idea of like I think it's too slow on the attack. Like I don't know. What do you think? Um, <clears throat> sorry, you could fit this into a rush type deck just because of the big health. Right. You slap that. You can. Slap that down. Hopefully, you have some rush minions on the field already, um, or just have some minions on the field. Throw some attacking. Should survive till next turn. Do some attacking again, and then use that as a big hit at that point. But that's it. it requires a lot of things to happen for it. So it's not the best card, but it definitely plays to rush. Yeah, yeah. Or you can just try an aggro variant, or maybe you just have board state already. But, yeah. Uh... It, it definitely requires something along those lines, and it doesn't reward you until the next turn. If this had a rush tag on it, maybe? Maybe? Oof, that'd be fun. That would be fun, but it doesn't, so unfortunately not. Life is hard. Life is hard, man. <laughs> uh, okay, I know you're probably a fan of this one. Uh, eight, eight mana, six, six, Tess Greymane. Legendary <laughs> yes. for Rogue. Uh, Battle Cry. Did you know I was going to say it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It was kind of a hard tell, wasn't it? All right. Uh, replay every card from another class you played this game. Targets chosen randomly. Uh, same thing happens with Yogg. If it just it dies, it dies and stops. Oh, actually, this one continues. I believe they changed yeah, that. Yeah, it has the pre-nerf Yogg. Pre-nerf Yogg, yeah. So, what are your? I'm, I'm gonna let you take this one. I've got no thoughts on. It. I know exactly what I think about it, but I'm gonna let you take this one. You you sell me on this card, okay? All right. Let's, okay. 
So you got this, you got Spectral Blade. You got Hallucination, you've got Pickpocket. As long as you don't face another rogue, right. you're good, right? Yeah, exactly. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. That is the only downside. Um, of course, if you do, then you're just looking to try to outvalue your other rogue opponent. Um, the downside to this one being that all the cards you will play will be randomly targeted. Right. So Rogue has a lot of deal X ability to minion. So this can also really backfire, especially if you're against another Rogue. So I'm always going to look at it from Rogue v. Rogue perspective. Um, or Sha if Rogue v. Shaman, because Shaman has that similar problem of targeting things and just trying to kill them. Mm -hmm. So your own board. Right. But again, I really want Burgle to work. If you have Cutlass on the field, you could get a lot of durability from that. It doesn't necessarily help your Cutlass, because right. you still only have two attack, but right. I want Burgle to work yeah, so maybe, badly. You know what? Maybe you just, you know, maybe you gotta play it for safety. This this also, yeah, this plays minions as well, so if you just play another minion, it just plays it out, and that's like huge stats. Right? Like, any minion yeah. that you get played out another time is like insane stats. Also, like, um... Maybe you, maybe you play Witcher's Cauldron in, 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 in your deck just to, like, in case you go against Rogue v. Rogue. And you right? Know, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? And that's um, why I was okay with it. But then it becomes that, oh, Shaman cards are targetable. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, Do you exactly. want to risk that kind of thing? I guess. I guess. Um, Some say just don't play the cards, but... What if you have to? If this card honestly can get just minions, like if you just stole a bunch of minions and played all those cards and played Test Grayman, like that's like ridiculous. That'd I be think, perfect. I think that's just like super ridiculous and like could be just so much value. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to see a lot of highlights of this card and maybe this card is what pushes that archetype over the edge, maybe into tier, tier two. I'm seeing it fitting in the tier three right now, but uh, yeah, possibly. definitely tier three, possibly. Possibly, we can go far with Burgle Rogue. Maybe, hopefully. And the thing is, the higher the tier, the less good it is. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's so interesting archetype. It's a terrible conundrum. I hate it. <laughs> um. Anyway, next card. Um. Blink Fox Rogue card. Common three mana three three. Battle cry. Ah, Add yes. a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. <laughs> You love this card too. This card fits in the archetype. I'm not sure what else there is to say about it. It's also a beautiful card. It's kawaii as fuck, dude. Kawaii. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm in love with the cards, Art, man. I just want golden copies of these, to be honest. Coming off of the pirate who is now being rotated, and I already forgot its name, um, Burgle Pirate. Yeah. Um, this is a nice addition. I'm sure it's a bit later, but 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, plus get a card. What's wrong with that? Yeah, you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I do feel like just like in the, just like in a mirror match though, if you were to play against another rogue, I feel like you would just try to tempo out your opponent. So maybe you should be trying with that deck in particular to mm -hmm. build the deck around like, okay, I have the condition that I could steal my opponent's cards, but I want the condition that I have these stats on board that allow me just to push for game. Yeah, right? Like, that's the idea, right? Because if you play against, like, the mirror, your deck's concept just goes out the window, right? But if you have mm -hmm. that tempo concept, then maybe you can still push something. Yeah, I think if you're going to try building that deck, try something along those lines. Because you want to have another win con other than just stealing your opponent's cards for that auto, and, out, right? And I just remember something about Lillian. Um, a great part about playing her is that if you do get burgle some cards that you don't like, right. you can then play, keep them in your hand. Don't play them. Um, Lily in them away, so I'd hopefully get better cards to play with and then replay again with Tess. Exactly. So it might be a high skill cap deck. Maybe. Or RNG deck. We'll see. Who knows? You can't technically you can't play around your opponent's cards if they just from, they're just random. So you can't play around your own cards if they're just random either. Yeah. True. <laughs> I'm gonna get a bunch of random ass cards, Jesus. Um, anyway, next card. Uh, two mana, two, two, mage, legendary, archmage, auto gal. Uh, whenever you draw a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. What? That's like nuts, man. Book of Spectres, four mana. Book of Spectres. Draw six? <laughs> what? Yep. That's yep. like, that's, it's incredible. Like, where do these get, like, why would you... I do that? Like, you'd have to save that combo, obviously, but like, my god, man. 
you I'm build a zoo it. deck, you drop this and Book of Spectres, instant hand refill, right. copy, two copies of every creature you just drew. Yeah, this, this you are now is... ready to keep dropping creatures on the board. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. That's like, This card's nuts. <laughs> This card's yeah. like actually not, and it's like if you don't kill it, it gets just like way more nuts. So like you have to kill it. It's not you hard to kill. To. It's not hard to kill. I'm just gonna woodcutter axe this 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 son of a bitch. But like you know, yeah. Still, it's 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 crazy. It's a crazy yeah. card. It's definitely gonna definitely see some fun. Play. Yeah, definitely. But like Aloneth too. Like even if I had Aloneth and I just play this and I just oh let me draw more cards. Oh, I'm gonna overdraw. That's the problem. I I've seen lists with like this card and Book of Specters and Aloneth and they're like yeah dude no. all the cards and I'm like dude, chill like you didn't realize you mill your deck eventually and you overdraw you, like your whole ten yeah. hand. Yeah, you can only have ten cards in your hand. So what is your plan after that? Uh. Exactly. This isn't like Magic the Gathering. I can't just tap and drop my hand. You know, like that's just not how it works. Oh uh, boy. Anyway, uh, next card: uh, Mage Rare Bonfire Elemental, five mana, five five. Battle cry. If you play an Elemental last turn, draw a card. Draw a card tag's pretty good. Do you want to draw more cards? Jeez, I mean, at this point, I'm not sure what the right amount of drawing cards is. Uh, I don't think this card's particularly strong. The stat line is too fair, and drawing a card is not as strong. It doesn't really impact the board unless you run... Like, Mage already has, like, all these cards to, well, draw more cards. So, mm -hmm. ask yourself, do you want that? And uh, the answer, for me at least, is probably no. What do you think? Um, If you want to run this in, like, an elemental type thing, type shell, just so you can focus on drawing cards without having to worry about arcane intellect as much right. so you can hopefully keep um that and discovering new elementals just to keep refilling your hand right. so that you can get rid of that three slot and not have to worry about drawing cards that way or an odd mage with this and black cat you again don't have to worry about having that three slot go to arcane intellect so i see some way that this could work um but yeah like this that line is just okay right it's not the best yeah, I like the I like elemental synergy though. Elemental synergy is pretty good. I wish this was a shaman card. Actually, I kind of just want. I wish there was a shaman card. I would like to draw a card future. Um. Anyway, maybe in like a control deck. Actually, it's I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next card, uh, Mage Epic, Arcane Keysmith, four mana, two two. Battlecry, discover a secret, put it into the battlefield. Um, secrets cost three now. That means you're getting a one mana two two, but this is on turn four. Um, it's not bad. I think it, I think the whole secretive power, like it can literally be anything. I'm sad that Ice Block had to leave. Not really. I, I'm lying. Don't listen to me. Um, but Ice uh, Block was the best card ever. It's just stupidly unfair. <laughs> Um, yeah. I was like, why, why are more people playing mage, dude? Like, you put it in literally every mage deck. That's the thing. Um, but yeah. I think it's actually a pretty good card. I don't know where I would be playing it, though. That's my problem. It's like I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I guess it's just an average like, good card. Maybe just put it in a control deck because you can also just put it in the book of like any deck that abuses Book of Spectres because it's not an actual spell. It just discovers a spell and puts it onto the mm -hmm. field at the same time. So, yeah. Especially if you get a copy of it with Archmage. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah, you could really try to go in with that minion, ma minion mage idea again um, and still manage to keep secrets. Um, there are a lot of interesting ways to just keep getting spells in your hand for free. So I'd like to abuse that, even if I only run minions. Right. So that way, Book of Spectres doesn't... I don't really get that back that downside of it. So that's the only situation I see this being somewhat run. And we have some decent secrets in Mage right now. Well, my personal favorite is uh, Explosive Rune, so can't play around that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, Explosive Rune is just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a really dumb card. But, uh, it's, oh, great. I mean, like, if you just land that or counter spell, like, there's some battle ones, though. Like, you don't want to get, like, Spellbender or Ice Barrier or whatever. And just, True. Like, maybe you do, but I don't know. Um, I think, yeah, I think it, it could see, like, the Book of Spectres, Argal, like, play, maybe. I think it's all right. I think it's a so That's the benefit to the Discover, is that you can actually, you pick from one of three, right? Yeah, so you can, exactly. It's, it's flexible. I like it's, it. It's likely that you'll get the, the one you want. Yeah. Um, anyway, next card. Uh, four mana, three, three, Witchwood Piper, neutral, rare, battle cry, draw a minion from your deck with the lowest mana cost. Uh, 
I like this card, man. I think it. I think this card has a lot of potential. I'm not I, like I'm not going to discount it because the idea of just drawing a minion from your deck with the lowest mana cost means that you're in control of what you're drawing. Uh, mm -hmm. For the most part, you're in control, and that is very helpful for anything that's trying to like complete a combo. Or people suggested Prince K. Um, people suggested oh. pull Doomsayer for control reasons because you're not going to run any early game minions anyway. Uh, people were saying uh, Clutch Mother's Zavarius or whatever it was for like discard lock, and I was like, okay. Like now, I think you're kind of pushing it. Like the Prince Kay you had me, <laughs> you're losing me on Doomsayer. You're, then you lost me on the Clutch Mother. Um, uh, so I don't know. I think this card has like just a ton of potential because if you are playing somewhat of a combo deck, it's going to revolve around a certain set amount of cards, like you would in Quest Mage, right? Yeah. Um, even you can play this in Quest Mage, I guess, if you wanted to, because it would just draw those uh, Sorcerer's Apprentices out of your hand. Mm -hmm. So, or sorry, into your hand. Uh, and I, I think it's just has really high potential. What do you think? Um, the Doomsayer idea is an interesting one, especially in a control deck because you could, you know, it helps thin your deck essentially. Right. You get rid of the Doomsayer. You can, if you play it on six, you can actually even play the Doomsayer. But I liked it in um, that Hunter quest, which I keep going back to, right. because it helps you get that. You're looking for one cost. No matter what, what point, you're looking for one cost because your one costs are going to be pretty good once you get Queen Carnassa out. Right. You're going to be able to draw de draw your one minion Raptor. Right. So it could see some play there too if that deck ever takes off, which I really hope it does. Yeah. I mean, down the line, man, if there's like, oh, you got to have these low cost minions to complete like Exodia and destroy your opponent, like this card's going to be integral, I think. I think yeah. I think it's definitely going to have that. Uh, that have that effect on the meta. Anyway, next card. Uh, Druid of the Scythe. Three mana, two, two. Uh, Druid card, common. Choose one. Transform into a four, two uh, with rush or a two, four with taunt. Uh, I don't think it's good enough, man. I just don't think it's good enough. I think it's a, I think a cool art card, but uh, I think it's four, two with rush. Meh. Like, you're not, like, selling me on the point. Like, it's probably going to die. If you trade into anything, uh, and the two forward taunt, like that's just solid stats. It's not like something that blows me out the water, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is like uh, I can compare this card with Animal Companion. Like you got the Huffer effect, and you have like a Leo, but as taunt. Um, oh, this is yeah. always Huffer. So like, <laughs> but Huffer is only good when he goes face. So when it doesn't go face, it's like shit. What the oh hell God, damn it, Huffer. Yeah, exactly. Like you know what I mean. What do you What are your thoughts on this card? Um, I like the flexibility. The 4-2, you can do 4 damage to a minion for 3 mana, so I kind of sort of like that a bit. But it's only to a minion, so what's the real benefit? It's definitely going to die, because we lost yeah. so many of the 1-3s. Yeah. Like, Archaeologist can kill this at a, as a rush. I'm not sure why you're trading into an Archaeologist, but you can. Yeah, it so, just, it can, like the rush tag on the four two just seems so redundant. It's like it's just, yeah, I clear a minion, but then that's my turn on turn three. Like, yeah, like sure, I guess. But if you know, you're it's... looking for a way to control the board, sure? Question mark. If you have no better options, but Druid has some pretty other options. Yeah, they got a lot of options. Yeah. So not as good as I would like it to be. Uh, next card, uh, Be Bewitched Guardian. Uh, five mana, four, one, taunt. Battlecry, gain plus one health for each card in your hand. This is a similar effect to Twilight Drake. It's one more mana, but you gain the taunt. Uh, so Hand Druid, in particular, people are talking about it, saying it's going to be pretty good. Um, this card in particular is going to be played in it. This is a strong card, man. Uh, I really do like the card's concept. I think it's... I just think it's really, really strong. I, I think that... Uh, I mean, this is... The thing is, with uh, any kind of stat effects that's that comes out as the battle cry, uh, loses mm -hmm. hard to silence. Silence will be prevalent, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but that being said, this is still, besides that one fact, um, a strong card, uh, and will definitely be a good part of hand druid, and just maybe typically a good like any kind of druid that wants to play it, because uh, ultimate infestation just makes this card like pretty good, I would say. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I'd like to see Handred in a form of like semi-aggressive, because there is the one that makes every a bunch of one-one wisps for every card in your hand. Right. So 
that plus this. Uh, hopefully you get this big enough so that you can then spend the next few turns just pumping your board, right. which would be a nice addition. Right. Um, that is my ideal version of Handroid. It would be pretty tough to run now. So I'm, I'm interested to see where Android will go. It's something they're forcing on us, so we're going to get more support from it. Right. Yeah, most likely. Um, next card. Uh, so this is the card we were talking about with the Mossy Guardian or whatever it was. The uh, Warlock card, 2 mana. Curse of Weakness, rare. Echo, give all enemy minions minus 2 attack until your next turn. Uh, Warlock doesn't really need more board clears, but this card is an amazing stall card because it's until your next turn. So on the next turn, your opponent's just gonna be looking at his zero attack minions and be like, "Okay, pass." <laughs> or if I play this with Doomsayer, it's like, "Okay, pass." <laughs> like, you know, like it's just a great stall card. They don't really need this. The Warlock would just be getting more and more cards that are just insane. Like, like. I don't know what to say, man. It's it's, it's insane. I I think this card's like really really strong. And you just run one of these. It's Echo, so you don't have to it's run Echo. two. Yeah. <laughs> when you by the time you really want to run this, it's gonna be late enough that you can use it three four times a turn anyway. Yeah. So, hell, even two times a turn is more than enough for most boards. Yeah. So, <sighs> Drew, um, Warlock gets more love, and the rest of us cry and wonder how do we beat them in the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe it's not the best deck anymore. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, next card: two mana, two one. Squashling, Priest, Common, Echo, Battle Cry, Restore two health. Uh, comparable to Voodoo Doctor, you're paying the one extra mana for the Echo tag. Um, I wouldn't sleep on this card, man. I think it's uh, got a lot of potential because it's just a cheap card with a really good effect. And uh, synergizes with their other cards that they're going to be getting. And uh, like even this with like an Arcanine. Arcanine Soul Priest, man. Look, I'm just going to shoot two damage just randomly everywhere and develop two ones. Like, that's not that bad, man. I don't. I would definitely wouldn't sleep on this card. What are your thoughts? Um, I like the versatility of the Restore 2 health yeah. because of that other Drake that was announced. So uh, if that Drake ever sees play, we can get some synergy there. Um, or if you're really down and out, just heal yourself. Yeah, exactly. But and develop board while board, also so. exactly while developing board. So it, it's I'm interested to see where this goes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, next card: two mana, two two. Ghostlight Angler, Shaman, Common, just as Echo and Murloc tag. So it's just neutral. Oh, not neutral. Sorry, it's just a uh, like a blank state. Echo card that just summons two two Murlocs for two. Um, you can try to complete this with the Murloc quest later. Uh, you're probably better off just playing one cost Murlocs and more Murlocs and the Primal Fin Totem. Um, it's not super amazing with Hagatha on like turn ten. You can drop five of these and then get five spells. Like that's not bad. Um, but I don't know, man. I think it's too weak. I think it's really too weak. Especially in the Shaman. Like, if this was, like... I don't know. Maybe it's just... I don't know. I think Neutral would be too strong, maybe. I don't know. There's some interesting ideas going around for Shaman. And this doesn't fit into any of them, aside from... Yeah, this helps with Agatha's hero power. Yeah, but any minion does, right? So you can probably get something that develops board a bit better. Um, makes your presence a bit more known. Especially after Agatha enters, hopefully you would wipe... I've wiped the board, so we're starting from zero anyway. But you, you'd want to at that point when after you played Agatha, you definitely want bigger things down, not five two twos. Yeah, somebody made the joke that this was basically just Cold Light Oracle in Ghost form because it's past. <laughs> oh no! <Yeah. laughs> oh no! So I was like, okay, man. I mean, I can see it. <laughs> I see it. Rip, but this isn't drawing me two cards. Neither is it my opponent. So, oh well. Anyway. Next card. Uh man, this card, man, holy. Uh Shaman Legendary, nine mana, six six shutter walk. Repeat all uh, battle cries from your uh from cards you played this game, targets chosen randomly. Um I oh man, like this card I saw it on stream and I was like, what? The, <laughs> this card looks insane. It just does all the things I wanted to do. I mean, but then again, stream's just the highlight thing. Yeah. So uh, 
I think in the right deck, this is going to be an absolute insane card. I, I, um, I think we've already found an OTK with this, so I'm interested to see how that works out. Really, um, OTK? What the? Yep. Fuck? Um, your battle cry. You're sending up the minion to battle cries twice. You're using Grumble. You're discounting your elementals, Share Knight, Chain Gang, and Zola, so that you can keep playing Shutterwalk, essentially for one mana, and you throw down Life Drinker as well. So every turn you will deal six damage to your opponent because Battle tries will trigger twice, and gain six health. So you just do that ten times a turn until uh, they die. I mean, the battle cries are random, right? Like, it's just random. Yes. Order. And, like, a lot of my friends were saying, oh, man, this is insane. You always add a copy, copy back uh, into your hand. Um, but, like, if you just get the Zola battle cry, it, it can't, Zola can't add itself, so it won't add it back to your hand. Um, the way around that that was found was that you use, I think it's Murmuring Elemental, so your battle cries will trigger twice, so that no matter what, you'll always get one Serenite before you get a Zola. Oh. Yeah. So by having Shutterwalk itself, Battlecry trigger twice. Yeah. Dude, what if so. you just saved the coin and you just went uh, <laughs> murmuring coin shutter? How insane would that be? Exactly. Like, whew, hold, and it, be great. It, it, hold on a second. So then repeat all Battlecries from your... But then the murmuring's Battlecry is double, right? And then you're yes. doubling that on top of that. So then how does that work? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you will. You're guaranteed to get Shutterwalks in your hand. Oh my god! And then, so next turn, it's done. The game is done. Wow! Because dude. you just, yeah. I don't so that's. Go. I'm just gonna go rogue, vanish your board, and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> Concede because I know it's all gonna come back the next year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, man, I think we're gonna see something. Somebody's gonna try something wacky with this, or it's gonna be meta. Some, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna throw a coin in the air, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the ridiculousness. Yeah. Uh, next card: two mana, two two, baleful banker, uh, battle cry. Uh, choose a friendly minion, shuffle a copy of it into your deck. So that's like the Zola effect. People are be saw this on uh, highlight where he shuffled the Shutterwalk back into the deck. Mm -hmm. um, two mana, two two is pretty weak stats. I can get a two mana, two three river cockless because just better stats. But um, like the effect itself, I guess you might want to run it in a control deck. It like stops fatigue. Um, I don't know. It, I don't see it really anywhere else other than that battle cry thing. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. where where do you see it? I don't know. Um, I don't think walk. Yeah. <laughs> Shutterwalk is the only thing I'm, I'm thinking about right now, and like it, it could had... potentially try to fit it into a Kingsbane thing, because there's that new combo: your weapon gains one attack, and just kind of keep doing that, or do that with Captain Greenskin. But there's a lot of requirements before you get to that point, and Mill Rogue won't even work, so it'll just be a straight Kingsbane Rogue. So probably not. True. I was going to say patches, but rip that, dude. <laughs> Poor went out for patches. Yeah. He's no longer in charge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now he just goes, yar, and I'm like, hey, that's a joke, dude. Get out of here. Get out of my <laughs> I saw Pyro Warrior play that against me, and I was like, nope, what's wrong with you, dude? Come on. Um, Shaman Common, uh, zero mana, deal two damage to a minion, overload one. It's backstab, but overload one. So, I mean... And it's just uh, damage. Zap. Yeah, zap. I didn't say it. Uh, but uh, it, it's also not just to an undamaged minion. It's just anywhere. Uh, if it had the echo tag, it would have been better. I would have rather just overloaded a bunch and just clear my opponent's board. Um, but I don't know. I don't think it's a bad card to add to the pool of uh, Hagatha. I, I think it's an okay card. It's like that easy removal, right? The Overload 1 is... It's just the worst backstab with the Overload 1, but... And there's no way to remove Overload now because we've lost it all, so... Yeah. Um, it is definitely a wor It's a Shaman backstab. Yeah. Um, not really much else to it. The Overload is definitely a downside on, like, actual backstab. I don't know why they felt the need to do that, but... Well, because they just don't want to give the better backstab, that's why. <laughs> but um, the backstab is so balanced, right? Yeah, it's like not, not the best card in the game or something. Like, it's, it's <laughs> cool. 
Um, but like, yeah, if you want to temple out your board, it's not bad. Like, I'd rather take the overload if I was board state, right? And I could just mm -hmm. control board anyway, so the overload might not matter. So I don't know. I I could see it somewhere. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's, it's some weird engine with bog shaper too, because then you yeah. cast the spell, so you already get to draw a minion from your deck. Gadget Sam, that's a, that's a draw card, you know. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, carry on Drake, five mana, three seven hunter dragon, uh, battle cry. If a minion die this turn, game poisonous. Five mana, three seven. Good stat line. I like it. It's, uh, like the festering Hulk was five mana, two seven. Um, but this is a five mana, three seven, and has the possibility to get poisonous, which is more likely than not because you're playing hunter. Uh, is dragon hunter a thing? I don't know. I, I don't Hopefully, really... eventually. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, you can play the Dragon Egg, and then you can trigger the Death Rattle to trigger Death Rattle, whatever that card is, Play a Dead, or whatever I think it's called. Yeah, you can do that. You can, I don't know. There's, like, a couple things you could do. Uh, I, I, like, I have, I have, I have no idea. Um, I, it's a good card. That's about it. Might see some play. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I'd, I'd like it, um, especially in, a, in that Rush Shell for Hunter, because after you get the Houndmaster on, you can... You can pretty much throw anything into anything. This gains poisonous. It has a good body attached, so you smack yeah. something down. It lives. It still has poisonous, you know? Yeah. It, high health poisonous for five mana, it, it's, like, pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. I like it. Um, yeah, decent card. Hopefully we'll see something of it. Uh, next five mana hunter card, Vile Broad Skitterer. Uh, five mana, one, three, poisonous rush beast tag. Common for hunter. Uh... It's Assassinate, but where's Assassinate? It doesn't go past taunts, and uh, nobody plays Assassinate, so... I mean, the beast tag is not really that important to you. I don't know. Three health won't survive on five mana against anything, because that's Rush. It would just kill it. Uh, I mean, if you want to be, like, super, like, annoying, you can, like, uh, that dire card, whatever it's called, give plus three, shuffle it in. Um, you can pull mm -hmm. this from Katrina. That's, like, an insta-kill. Um, mm -mm. so, I don't know. I don't think it's good, but, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I don't see a place to run this where you can, with that epic, that same hunter epic that if you drop a 1-1, one, one, you, a 1 cost, you give it poisonous. Right. And you can run that again in the rush shell, so I don't really see the reason to run Vilebrood. Yeah. I mean, it's another card you can get Deathstalker or Rexar with, and, like, that's not bad. It's got a good health total, so you give it, like, a cheap... High attack minion with this, and then you have like a like six or seven cost mm -hmm. like rush poisonous. It's not bad. That's yeah, not that's definitely really something better, good yeah. from the Witchwood. It's yeah. fixing a fixing Deathstalker or build a beast and adding more. Yeah, we can definitely see something good out of it, maybe, but not as the card you want to play in your deck. <laughs> no. Next card, Worm Guard, seven mana, three eleven. Battle Cry. If you're holding a dragon, game plus one attack and taunt, dude. Seven mana. 411 taunt is like the, the nut man it's so good like that that is ridiculous but you have to fill in the condition and that condition alone is like i mean it's on seven mana so like you gotta like really commit to it if you want to play this card uh um i don't know what else to say about it uh you got any ideas um dragon holding a dragon we lost a lot of those cards with that synergy right now, so that is a bit of a pain. So again, I'm still thinking that maybe we're gonna get something further down the line. Um, right now, I'd like to see this in a Lady in White. Yeah. And hopefully later down the line, Lady in White in a Dragon Shell, then this becomes a beast. Dude, you go Emerus on this, man? Oof. 22 Oof. health, get past that body, son. <laughs> and you just go Spellbreaker and I cry. <laughs> But, uh, Damn it, silences. Yeah, exactly. This would have been literally like amazing in combo priest with dragons and stuff. Like that would have been like legit, man. Like the high health total. It has taunt, has to be answered, protects your dragons, and if you don't kill it or hurt it, you just double the health of it and like inner fire kill your opponent. Yeah. That would have been nuts. Thank God that's not happening. But <laughs> yeah, in wild it is. But I mean, shit. Like <laughs> poor wild. <laughs> exactly. Wild seems worse and worse every time I look at it. Jeez. <laughs> um, next card. Uh, I think it's just pack filler, basically. Vicious scale hide. Uh, two mana, one three life steal rush. What's a beast? 
Um, just like Steel Rush, 1-3. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I think just Pack Filler. Decent Arena card. Can possibly see with, if you have a ping ability as your hero power, can possibly see uh, that combo with the ping to clear something, heal yourself. Uh, you can go Dire Frenzy with this, and you can get a bunch of, uh, you know, Lifesteal Rush minions. Um, but I don't know. I think there's just better targets. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I like it because it's a beast, so it fits nicely into our little hunter package. Right. Uh, all our beef bus buffs. Maybe we finally get to use Dinomancy? One day? Maybe. One day. I have eh. some odd hope about that. It's a stretch. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. But... The lifesteal is definitely something that I like, yeah. and if anything, worst case, build a beast. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. That's, that's like lifesteal rush might be better than a poisonous ru rush for two mana. Yeah, it's good. It's good for the or a lifesteal poisonous rush. That's why I don't know. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, next card, uh, five mana, three, four, ghostly charger, common, four paladin, uh, divine shield, and rush. So compared to Argent Commander, Argent Commander saw some play uh, when the card pool wasn't as big. Uh, this card obviously is just gonna be trading into your thing because it will most likely kill the thing and leave the three four on field, which is not bad. Um, I think it's a pretty decent card, but I don't know if it's gonna see a lot. It might be in control paladin most likely. Uh, yeah, I don't know where else I'd be able to see that. Great card for trading. Should still be called Ghostly Rusher. Yeah. But <laughs> other than that. Yeah, dude, this is like <laughs> fake news, bro. Fake news. It's like nice <laughs> this card. Um, anyway, uh, next card Blazing Invocation. Uh, one mana rare shaman spell, discover a battle cry minion. I think this is an amazing card to add to the Hag of the Fool. I think it's just a decent card overall. Um, so yeah, I think it's a. I think especially in that battle cry Shutterwalk deck, decent. I think it's a good yeah, card. like Shutterwalk, more battle cries. What's the downside? Yeah, Hopefully exactly. not killing Shutterwalk, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you just want like a niche battle cry that you don't have, and then you're like, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, could, could work. And it's just a great card out of, out of the bag at the pool. So, hundred percent down for it. Uh, next card, uh, Shaman Spell, Earthen Might, 2 mana, rare, give a minion plus 2 plus 2 if it's an elemental, add a random elemental to your hand. Pushing the elemental synergy, I always wanted to see elemental shaman go far, this is a great addition to it, it's also a great addition to the Hag of the Pool again, and uh, it just adds more of that value, and I do like it a lot. I think it's it's cheap, and it's got good like plus 2 plus 2 value on it, so yeah, I yeah. it's good. Oh, in an elemental shell... I'm always, I'm also always a fan. I just love elementals in general, so right. I'd love to see elementals go far, right. get more elementals, play more elementals. Uh, what's to lose? Elementals, fun. Exactly. It's good. Hmm. I like that. Who is that on that? Oh, I think that's Hagatha, actually. Is that Hagatha? <laughs> I think that might be Hagatha. I don't know. Man. Oh, <laughs> Looks so like we can run this with like a Hagatha, Bog Shaper. Bog yeah. Shaper's an elemental, right? Yeah, Bog Shaper's an elemental. Yeah. Yeah, neat. Uh, Powden Secret, one cost, Hidden Wisdom, Epic Secret. After your opponent plays three cards in a turn, draw two cards. I wouldn't play two of this. Same thing like Rat Trap. Like I think it's, uh, I think it's a good card just to play as uh, as a one of. And uh, you'd love to pull this from the Bell dude, the Bell Challenger mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, Century, right? Probably. Yeah, nah, it's Bell Challenger because it's all mysterious now. <laughs> yeah, that was a weak joke, my bad. Uh, secret after, yeah. So I mean, I like the I like the tag of it, and like I don't know. I think it, I think it could honestly see some play. It might even see more than one. Who knows? Draw two cards a lot more valuable, I think, because cards are better than just the overall stat and minion. And later down the line, it rewards you anyway. Like, because mm -hmm. like the rat trap, sure, it rewards you earlier if the if it happens earlier because the six six is a lot more threatening later down the line it's not as threatening and can be answered this just your opponent can't play around at all game and it's going to reward you regardless um yeah unless your opponent decides i'm gonna play around this all game take him to fatigue then i'm gonna play three cards and let him go <laughs> too why, oh no that's real mean dude like why you gotta do that to me yeah that is streets ahead yeah dude 200 ik plays <laughs> Here's my lethal boys. Just wait for fatigue. <laughs> well, anyway, um, yeah, I like. The this card. would be fun in some um, 
I guess, aggro deck. You could run that if you really, really wanted to and hope that your control opponents are just going to spend all of their mana to um, clear your board repeatedly. Yeah, I think people are going to get greedy with this with Hydrologists. They're going to look at it and be like, oh, pick, 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 but then they're going to get like, you know, absolutely punished by it, maybe. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Could see play. Most likely will. Uh, next card. One mana, zero, three. Swamp, Dragon, Egg, Common, Neutral, Death Rattle. Add a random dragon to your hand. I mean, this is a one mana zero three. Most eggs are zero two at one mana. Like we got the we had the dragon hatchling egg or whatever it was, and we had the mm -hmm. runic egg. Runic egg. Yeah, exactly. Like if you can somehow abuse the eggs, man, go for it. How good is a random dragon? Probably not as good as you think it is. Like could get you emerus, could get you something. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I mean I'm not gonna like. I think maybe down the line it's gonna be better because eggs like nothing will ever beat a ruby and egg for what it was, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's a terrible card. It's a good pack filler. I think it's uh, I, maybe somebody's gonna try to abuse this like they did uh, for Devil Star Egg. Um, yeah, like I could see doing all these eggs shenanigans and play with plum. Was it play dead? Yeah, just do something around that, and it wouldn't necessarily be even tier three it would kind of just be a fun deck if anything yeah exactly but hey yeah, but, yeah we'll see. hopefully dragon synergy shows up again hopefully hopefully better dragons the better this gets right so yeah right yeah paladin legendary prince liam five mana five five battle all right transform all one cost cards in your decks into legendary minions so the whole random legendary minion thing it's okay uh I'm not sure if I like it as an additional effect of a random card to just give you these random things uh, or or upgrading your one-cost cards already in your deck. Is it better mm -hmm. to just get the randoms in your deck or just add, randomly add to your hand? Like, I'm talking about, like, Face Collector and Rogue or whatever. You just, that's Echo, keep adding, like, random legendaries or whatever. And uh, I don't know what to think about this card, man. I think, I think if you're trying to go for that control deck, like, you have your early game one cost cards and some that are left over you play prince liam and you just get random legendaries right so it could i don't know maybe in the control paladin i could see it it'd be an interesting addition um of course if you draw it too late if you have no more one cost cards in your deck then all you do is pay five mana for a five five which is pretty boring yeah but here's hoping that doesn't happen of all things yeah like do you think do you think it's better than at least the Trailblazer? Oh. Do you think um, because at least the Trailblazer sees play in control decks because it gives you D card in your deck and it's a plus five on draw. So, mm -hmm. like, and like most of the time those random cards give you a legendary anyway. But uh, like there are a bunch of random cards and like you gotta ask yourself like is the random legendaries better or is the random cards better with the plus five? For that you have to go back to the chart. You know. What are the odds of you getting a good or playable legendary versus absolute garbage? Right. And at least this only sticks to standard, I believe. Right. It doesn't say otherwise. Yeah. So this, um, I would my I would probably go with at least right now. There's not too many other legendaries I'd like. Yeah. Unless you get Godfrey, that'd be great. Um, but uh, yeah, you're right. Oops. Um. Three mana mage spell Cinder Storm. Uh, deal five damage randomly split among all enemies. Uh, it's arcane missiles, except uh, more. Yeah, it's just, it's just yeah, it's just more. It's just you're paying the one extra mana for the one extra damage for five. People are saying like, oh, odd mage. Yeah, uh, you need some sort of form of removal. Also, by the way, I don't know if you thought about that, but you can put Least Trailblazer in uh, your uh, Burgle Rogue deck. Uh, that's what one of my viewers said. So. <laughs> If you want, oh you yeah, could. you could. That's that's, that's you could. technically value, and it's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah at least there's a higher chance of getting you better cards, right? And it could give you the stat and minions too when you play Tess Greymane, right? So, yeah, I, I would consider it. Oh, um, but and... yeah, Cinderstorm. Uh, oh, but meh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play this. I think it's, I think it's like, too weak. I see why they added Cinderstorm. For it's, it's literally just for Odd Mage. Yeah, and it's. It's because they didn't want to add another fireball to the game, because then Mage would just run what is essentially two fireballs, one at four mana, one at three mana. Right. 
So, but I don't know why they made it this. Randomly split among all enemies. If it was like all enemy minions, then then this would be a lot better. But I just don't want it want any one of those hitting face by accident when I want to clear board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wish it was all minions would have been better. Yeah. Anyway. Uh Next card, uh, Curio Collector, 5 mana, 4, 4, mage card, rare, whenever you draw a card game, plus 1, plus 1. Uh, not bad. Book of Spectres, Synergy, Aragal, uh, on top of that, well, you know, it could be good. Not bad. Uh, we saw, like, Daring, you can compare it to Daring Reporter, except it's for your cards. It could be a little bit better. Uh, and it's got plus 1, plus 1 extra stats, and it can just even go further. With Alanet, mm -hmm. you drop this, and it's going to become a 7-7. Seven, seven. Eh, it's not bad. I can dig it. Yeah, I can definitely dig it. Dig it with the uh, book of specters play. Yeah. Um, yeah, it fits into that whole minion mage idea that's being thrown around, yeah. and I kind of like it. Uh, like the thing is, even with book of specters, even if you draw a spell and you kept it in your hand or whatever, it still counts as the plus one plus one. So yep, not bad. Yep. I like it. Uh, next card, uh, three mana, five, four, Marsh Drake, Battle Cry, summon a two, one poison is Drake's there for your opponent. Dude, if Potion of Madness was still around, this would be hands down the strongest card I've ever seen. In my life. Dude, like, kill your opponent's minions, summon a five, four dragon. Like, I don't think this card's bad at all. I don't think it's a terrible card, especially for a dragon. Um, I, this card's like, yeah, I mean, it summons the thing that kills it. But if you can just answer it, then it's pretty good. Uh, people yeah. are saying, like, Candle Shot with uh, Hunter, because, you know, Hunter or Dragons, and they're trying to push that for some whatever reason. All for some whatever tips. reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing, if you really wanted to still run this in Priest, you could do... Wait, did we lose... Um, Spirit Lash? No, the Steal a Minion under two from on the creature. I forgot what its name is already. Uh... Cabal, uh, no, the Cabal Priest or whatever. I don't know, I know yeah. what you're talking about. The six mana, four, five, right? Yeah, that's a basic card, so we haven't lost it. It's still in rotation. Okay. Yeah, sweet. So, if anything, you can actually steal the poisonous Drake Slayer for yourself. Yeah, so, um, that means that means it's combo wombo, man. I'm telling you, it's, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not, but I'm looking for that more dragon synergy. They rotated a bunch out, exactly. So, more maybe, dragons, the maybe better. down the line, we'll see something amazing with it. Uh, yeah. I'm not, not going to discount it yet. I, I, right now, it's pack filler, though. Uh, this is even more pack filler. Darkmire, Moonkin, 7 mana, 2, 8, spell damage, plus 2, tag. That's it. It's neutral. It's common. It's utter trash. I think it's terrible. Uh, the Evolved Cobalt was the card from Twist, uh, from the uh, Whispers of the Old Gods, and it was seeing some play because it was a 4 mana, 2, 2, plus 2 dam uh, spell damage. Um, but this is like so hot high stats and I don't like it at all, man. I don't think it's a good card. I think it's just really just pack filler because they got to put something in there. Um, yep. I really don't see the point in this. It doesn't really fit into any decks by the time you play this on seven. Yeah. What else are you playing? Sure. It might stick around, but for two spell damage, yeah. you know, for two more mana, you can play Malagos. And get yeah. three more spell damage. Yeah, exactly. And a way bigger so, stat line. So Exactly. So <laughs> there's no why? Point. There's mm. no point. And it's not even a beast. Like the last It's not game. a beast. Yeah. <sighs> that bothers me so much because it's yeah. a mire. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever, it's filler. Um three mana three three rabbit worgen, common for warrior, has rush tag on it. That's it. Three mana three three rush. Uh what else do you say about it? It's uh it's a good card. Good for arena. Um, might not see it's not broken. That's the reason why I won't see constructed play. But uh, for arena, yeah, pretty good. Takes out a low minion, maybe another one after that. Um, that's a, all I have to say about it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, if it clears anything with three health and can stick around, more power to it. Um, other than that, it's a three-three for a three. Yeah. Not not special. Yeah. If it had charge, maybe a little bit special. <laughs> if it could hit face, it would be the best card ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Tangle Fur Mystic, 3 mana, 3, 4, Battle Cry add random 2 cost minion to each player's hand. So the only thing that I can actually think about that even would make this remotely kind of, like, I guess, feasible to play in a deck is the fact that you're playing an odd deck and you want a 2-drop. Uh, but uh, that's about it. 
I, like we're reaching the pack filler territory, so we're gonna obviously see a bunch of like just subpar, if not even good cards. Um, but that's literally the only reason. I like the stat line. The stat line is premium, so this is a pretty good card for uh, arena as well. So yeah, I would pretty much only try to run this in arena. The more of a turn five, just kind of play this and hopefully play whatever two cost I get, yeah. unless it's Doomsayer, in which case I calculate the best time to play it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's Because if I can true. play this before my opponent plays their two cost that they get for free, then that's value to my board. Yeah, but then you give your opponent like a Arogal or a Pyros, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> Shit. <Exactly. laughs> Never lucky. Um, so... Next card, Hench Clan Thug. Uh, three mana, three three. After your hero attacks, give this minion plus one plus one. In Rogue, this is actually pretty decent. A three mana four four is a lot of tempo. So if they're gonna push any kind of tempo archetype, this is not a bad card to start with. Uh, um, but other, than, you can't like, you, like make an argument for Druid, but that's a bit too slow. Um, it's an odd cost card, so you can maybe try to push something with that. Uh, but the only thing I can right now see is Rogue making it a 4-4 on turn 3. And then after that, it threatens to be a 5-5. Five, five. Um, but mm -hmm. that's about it. Like, I don't really see any other way to make it work. You want to be really spicy, you go Doomhammer Shaman and make it a 5-5 five, five on turn 10. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's not really much there. Yeah. And then uh, we have 7 mana, 4, 9, Night Scale, Matriarch. Uh, priest rare whenever a friendly minion is healed summon a 3-3 whelp dude that could like be a lot of like potential to just like absolutely snowball out of control and I feel like the 9 health is ridiculous like you gotta remove that efficiently and not leave them the, the, the chance to heal I feel like it's too and, much and the people give it a lot of hate for some mysterious reason but I'm like it has potential it has potential you could run this with lady in white then it's a 7 mana 9-9 nine, nine. Yeah. Um, it sticks around you get 3-3 three, three whelps um, hell, it still works in combo if you're really, if you get, um, Skulking Geisted and just have to play other cards, you know? Exactly. It's good backup card. Yeah. And it's Dragon. Yeah. And hopefully see more Dragon Synergy along the I mean, people are going to try to play this for sure. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, it's really strong in the Priest Mirror matchup because it has four attack as well. So... Mm -hmm. Can't. Yeah. That's four, four tech. Yeah. What can I do to that priest? Exactly. <laughs> uh, next priest card. Man, this card is really interesting. Quartz Elemental, 5 mana, 5, 8. Can't damage while... Uh, sorry, can't damage? Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> can't attack while damaged. It's an elemental. Um, that's huge, man. And it, it it's like... If... I guess you let... I don't know. I guess you would let your opponent do the, do the trade for you. Give him an unfavorable one. Um, but you have to sort of put resources into it even though it can't attack while it's damaged. So unless you're pinging it every turn, which just gets countered by the priest hero power, it could pose a threat. I think there's something mm -hmm. in this. And, like, the fact that, you know, it it also just merits, like, even if it was damaged because you don't want to attack, you put Northshire, then somehow heal it, then you're drawing cards, and then it attacks again. Like, I don't know. I think it poses a threat. It's a good five mana Five mana five eight is just ridiculous stats, so absolutely ridiculous stats. Um definitely a bit hard to play just yeah. because of the restriction. But I can I would not be surprised to see this around in some weird uh we still get circle of healing, so like yeah. healing it for healing it back up to full wouldn't be entirely difficult in priest, plus the power and you yeah. could do ridiculous if you stuff here. You play Odd Priest or whatever. You could play Odd Priest, put this into the deck, then you're healing for four. And it's going to for sure heal this thing. Most likely. Yeah. Unless, if it's not healing for four, it's dead. So. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Anyway. Um, four mana zero nine unpowered steam bot. Common taunt mech. We saw this with Lady in the White. It was a four mana nine nine. It was the new meme. But uh, other than that, man, that's like. That's not an amazing card, man. I don't really see it happening. Like, I can understand the, like, oh, it's going to protect your minions. Maybe you can do some inner fire combo shenanigans with Divine Spirit or whatever. Maybe. Maybe. I don't really see any other way to work with it. Um, it's more likely you're just going to be pack filler for the time being. Because we don't really see any mech synergies for a while. So... Yeah, like, even in Combo Priest, there are better options than this. Yeah. Especially are. thing... Yeah. So... Yeah, you could keep it around for Lady in White as your backup, but you gotta have it why? in the deck, and then it's like, ugh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. probably not. 
Uh, Divine Hinge. Two mana priest spell common. Restore six health to all friendly characters. I think this card's nuts. For just two mana, I'm gonna restore six health to all friendly characters. That's my that's myself. That's all my minions. I get to make favorable trades, or I get to heal and I make favorable trades. Like not to mention Northshire lets me draw a bunch of cards, and like if I'm behind, and like it, it's just a two mana heal six to all friendly characters, and the Paladin has a card that's a two mana heal six to one thing, either yourself mm -hmm. or something else. This just it's all around, and I think that that's pretty good. I don't think it's bad at all. I think this definitely can see some play in a priest deck, especially in standard. So, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing this with the Quartz Elemental, the Matriarch. Like you could definitely run like some interesting kind of heal priest. Well, that's what a priest should do, but yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, you can arcanite. Priest functioning as should. You can arcanite clear your board if you want. Uh. No. All right, fine. I'll get some. I'll leave that to myself. I was like, okay. I'll take that to legend. All right. Don't worry about it. That'll um, show them. No, exactly. How can you kill me if I have no board inside the box? Um. Next card: Walnut, uh, Walnut Sprite. Uh, three mana, three three Echo Common. Just set. Just you can drop three of these on uh, on uh, turn nine. nine, on turn ten with summoning portal. You can drop a full board of these. Uh, that's about it. Filler. Nothing else to say. Good arena card. No. Yeah, nothing really else there. Yeah. Uh, Cauldron Elemental, eight mana, seven seven. Your other elementals have plus two attack. It's got the elemental tag. It's common. It's neutral. It's shit. <laughs> like the card you compare this to, is Stormwind Knight. <laughs> classic card uh and it's uh it's never seen play so and this is just for elementals like i'd rather play stormwind knight than this so yeah never yeah played. like why why are you looking to buff elementals in this way yeah why are you looking to drop an eight mana seven seven elemental uh Element see elementals have decent stats with decent battle cries. The only the only ticket is that they have to be an elemental played last turn, like a, keep a cycle going. Mm -hmm. This doesn't. I mean, you play it and you buff the elementals that are already on board, but that's just as long as it stays there. Like this is gonna be arena card. That's it. Like there's not people. Are, if you push this, I will bow down to the person that just goes straight to legend with this thing in his deck. I'll I'll, I'll give it up. Cause that All right, will do. I'm going to put that in Jaina, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, man, you know, uh, you message me when you do that, and I'll just give you the, t you're, the you're the king. You're absolutely the king of games. All right? All right, so Cutthroat Buccaneer, we were talking about this earlier. It's a three mana, two, four combo. Give your weapon plus one attack. We were saying King's Bane Rogue. We were saying just regular Rogue. Uh, it's not bad. Just give plus one attack to your weapon. Um, the combo can be pulled with the other pirate, uh, the six mana five three. I'm not sure. I think it was uh, Castaway or something like that. Oh yeah, cursed Castaway. Yeah, cursed true. Castaway. Um, you can pull that, and it's just a fair statted card to get with the plus one on the combo. Uh, on three mana, you're not really gonna unless you want to coin into that. Like you can go. Uh, uh, if uh, no, that doesn't work because then you would just be daggering on turn two so anyway. Um, but uh, you can coin into it. You can shadow step it if you really want to promote that King's Bane effort. Yeah, um, Naga, it has some. Naga, 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 what was it? Corsair. It was Corsair. It gets rotated out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, why not? Yeah, like we lost a lot of pirates. That lost a lot of creatures that help our weapons out. Yeah. So this is the answer. They give it combo. Interestingly enough. Yeah, you could try to buff it with the. Uh... Captain, if you want to play more pirate synergy, more combo pirates. Yeah. yeah, we could try running that thing out. Yeah, give it a shot. Play a temple version of that. We'll see what happens. Uh, Sandbinder, 4 mana, 2, 4. Draw an elemental from your deck. If you're looking for a certain elemental in your deck, and you're only running a certain set, this is a great deck thing. This is a great searcher. I think it's decent. I think this card could see some play in, if you're looking for, let's say, Leyline Manipulator. Uh, Leyline Manipulator is a card you want to get so you can discount all your cards you get with Simulacrum or whatever. You play this card, you search out Leyline Manipulator. Seems pretty good. Um, if you're looking for, uh, I don't know, let's say a Bog Shaper. You're not really playing that many Elementals. You play Sandbinder, you get a Bog Shaper. That's about it. Definitely good then, especially for Elemental. A lot of Elementals have nice effects that you always want. Yeah. That's why you're running them, especially if you're... If you're running an all-elemental and you're missing the next elemental for your chain, 
this helps you along the way. That's that's it. That's it. It it's a card. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna say it's a decent card. It definitely will see some play. I, I think I think it, some certain deck it's gonna see some play or later down the line anyway. Uh, Fiendish Circle four mana warlock spell, common summon four one one imps. Uh, this is arena card. It has no synergies that you would really want in standard. Not gonna play it in zoo because it's just not as good. It also dilutes the pool of uh, Gul'dan, so you don't want to play it in any kind of Warlock deck in particular that's in standard, because you're going to have Gul'dan. That's about it, man. We're seeing a lot of the pack fillers right now, so not really impressive. Yeah. You see a lot mm -hmm. of the good cards already, so... Yeah. Um, I guess if you really wanted to, you could run that in a sort of zoo kind of thing. I, I mean, uh, but, but like... But... Yeah, like, options, I think. like exactly. It's like the paladin. It's like the warlock equivalent of the paladin card. Yeah, yeah. Except like a lot worse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Furious Etten, it's a seven mana five nine taunt. Uh, man, dude, this is a great arena card. Like an amazing arena card. I think this is like this is gonna trade in high health taunt minions. Like you're not gonna play this in standard at all. But for arena, you know, this is like. Actually, the nut because like you drop this on seven mana, you're trading into at least three minions, more likely yeah. than not. So that's that's pretty good, pretty good for that sense. Never gonna see standard play because it's just it's screaming out that it's never gonna see standard play. <laughs> yeah, nice stat line. Protect. He, yeah. he protects. Yep, yeah, he attack. He protected. Uh, which would imp one mana one one stealth death rattle right? give a random friendly minion plus two health it's also a demon i like this card this will see play in zoo most likely because it's just a good one drop uh you won't see malkazar's imp anymore uh so this could be just a good replacement for it um mm -hmm. the death rattle makes it really or stealth makes it really really annoying so it's not easy just to clear so this basically guarantees that it's death battle is gonna land yeah so that's like really really good um the plus two health is just like and it's a demon. With. Yeah. And it's a demon. Demon so, zoo. And it really helps. Yeah. Could be good. Uh, man, I don't know why they keep giving Warlock good cards. Like, they don't need good cards. Uh, Ratcatcher, 3 mana, 2, 2, Rush, Battle Cry, Destroyer, Friendly Minion, Gains, Attack, and Health. It's basically, uh, like, it's, it's like Dark Pact, except the fact it's 2 more mana. It's a minion. It gains the stats, and it's a rush. So if you go count Ashmore, you're just going to pull this card as well. So it acts like another cube to eat the cube. So yep. you're just eating more cubes, and you're just making stats, and you're trading on the board, and like, like this is nuts. Like, if you eat a cube, that's going to be, what, a 6-8 with rush? Yeah, that's exactly. pretty great. That's 3 mana. Let me just eat my 2 Doom Guards, and then just play this. And, yep. then, and then not only trade on your board, but then hit you for 10 in the face. That's not very balance. nice. Yeah, it's balanced gameplay right there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I like I'll do, I like the card's art. I think it's pretty cool, and I think it's definitely going to see some play. Yeah, I would be surprised if it doesn't. Uh, four mana, one six, Fell Soul Inquis uh, Inquisitor. Uh, Lifesteal and Taunt. It's also a demon. If that tag even matters to you. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else to say about this card. Again, a pack filler. Um, you're probably not wanting to pull this off of like possessed lackey. I'd rather just pull this draw cards out. Like, like, trust me, avoid daddy will do just as much, if not even like six times as much as this. Will do. Yeah, life steals nice. I get it, but like, it's not gonna define this card. Yeah, there's nothing really to look forward to in this one. Yeah. Uh, Life Drinker, you were talking about this one. Four mana, three, three, battle cry, yes. three damage. Part of my, part of the Shutterwalk combo. Yeah, restore three health to your uh, hero. I'd love to see that OTK go through. You show me that <laughs> OTK. I need to see that because, like, from what I'm hearing, that's, like, literally, like, nuts. I guess you, you would play this in, like, it's not a bad card. I think if it's perfectly statted. It's got a good effect. It's, like... Like, it's a beast. If it was just four man, if it was just four mana, you know, three three heal for three, that's not terrible, right? Like we've had cards like that in the past, like Fungal Enchanter or whatever. The four mana, or it was a, I'm not sure. That was a three 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 heal two to everything, and like mm. this is just one more, but you're dealing three damage and restoring three health to your heroes, so it's not bad. It's good in arena. Exactly. Could see battle cry shaman play. Um, I'm not sure where else you could see play it, but it's a decent card. I do like it. Um, yeah, yeah I, mean, I I like this card. I want to see various uses of it. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be really really good. Even just as good aggro tech, maybe you just want to heal, do damage, or just aggro mirror matchup. You play this. 
Yeah, Even a sustain it's... card in a beast deck, if anything. Yeah, I like it. It's because it's probably C play. Uh, Lost Spirit, two mana, one one death battle. Give your minions plus one attack. Uh, I'd rather not at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just garbage. It's just a bad card. I wouldn't even like to draft this in arena. So <laughs> it's pretty awful. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's not really much there. Yeah. Congratulations, you buffed your minions. Yeah, good job. Yes. I'm just gonna board clear you. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a new uh, destroy all secrets. They have to keep this in rotation. There has to be something in rotation. Chief Inspector, five mana, four six, destroy all enemy secrets. Cost one more than the uh, Eater of Secrets, and cost two more than Kazan Mis Mystic, that was in the older sets. Um, but it's a 4-6 for 5. Destroys all enemy secrets. It will see play somewhere along the road. Not as... not Probably not on the next set reveal. Or not reveal, but the uh, release. Um, that's about it. Yeah, this depends on how secrets go. As we're losing... As Priest is lo um Mage is losing Cabal Priest. Or, anyway, more free secrets. Then the secrets go down, obviously. Um, it's not like it gets a buff like Eater of Secrets, so... I mean, it's, like, a very solid stat line for, like, oh, yeah. a very niche effect, but, like, that's a very solid stat. I, I play a 5 mana 4-6 a lot of the time. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Snap Freeze, Rest in Peace Shatter. Shatter just sucks now, because it's, a. Uh, why would you play that over Snap Freeze? Uh, 2 mana, Freeze a minion. If it's already frozen, destroy it. So... You just have the tag of freezing a minion. You know, I wouldn't even be so far as to say this is, this could honestly see play in some sort of control deck or just elemental mage in general because you will have water elementals, you will have frost bolts in the deck. It could honestly just be hard removal. It's not bad. It's a neg one hard removal, but like that's most hard removals. So, yeah. And it's just like they just obviously power crept shatter. So, <laughs> and shatter uh, really yeah. see play, but this is nice. If uh, freeze mage really does. Make a comeback and stick. I mean, we have the one. What's that one elemental that makes your hero power also freeze minion? So you can throw that around too. Oh yeah, the one that's... three. I'm not sure what that's called, but yeah. Yeah. So like that. That's something that we can look into. Yeah. But that's the only case I really see it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but other than that, card art looks amazing on this card. I really like it. Yeah. I. I it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Mad Hatter, four mana, three, two, battle cry, randomly toss three hats to other minions, each hat gives plus one, plus one, this card's hilarious, I love this card. I, I really want them to have actual hats on them. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool, um, but, uh, man, I like, it's like, it's, it, they're trying to keep, like, that Mad Bomber kind of thing going, you know what I really liked about this set is that they brought back, like, all of the old things, like from uh, GVG or the Grand Tournament, or uh, what else was there? Uh, man, I forget the other ones that were there. Uh, but essentially, those two, they brought like back like mechs. They brought back like uh, they were. They had that whole like uh, they had like an older brother of like the Mad Bomber. They had like I don't know. They they just bringing back all these cool like like previous like archetypes or mechanics or stuff like that. They didn't bring back Joust or anything. Well. Yeah, they yeah. back Joust, but I like I like this card. It's very thematic. Uh, it's definitely a good arena card. I think if you have board already, man, this card's insane, dude. Yeah, like if you play this on board, it's ahead. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing if you're ahead. You're never gonna play it in, in like a constructed deck, but arena, I'll draft it just because it's hilarious. So <laughs> I can't wait to see his battle cry. I'm sure it's funny. Um, it's battle cry that was Shutterwalk. Oh my god, dude! Just start <laughs> tossing, dude. Can you imagine the Mad Mad Hatter like Shutterlock deck? You're just fucking tossing hats everywhere. Hats everywhere. <laughs> What's hats going on, on dude? <laughs> you like grumble? Do it again. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Somebody's gonna do that. Um, so next card: one mana, two one Swamp Leech filler, life steal. It's a beast. If you want life steal at one mana, then I don't know what you're doing because your health is already full. <laughs> so, uh, yes, turn one. Be ready yeah. for that healing back to thirty. Why? Yeah, ex why? <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Um, but yeah. If so, anything, like, it's another beast. True, and it can attach to Deathstalk or Rexar. So yeah, yeah. Stitch it together. It's pretty good with like rush or charge or anything like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Night Prowler, 
four mana three three battlecry. If this is the only minion in your bat in the battlefield, gain plus three plus three. So it's a four mana six six, but you have to accomplish that, and that's very hard to do. It has to be the only minion on the battlefield for it to gain plus three plus three. I was thinking if you run it after Doomsayer, then you're you're pretty set. If this is the first minion you play after Doomsayer, True. drop Doomsayer on three, doesn't die. Wipe the board. Drop this. Bam, six six. Why are you running Doomsayer and this? What kind of deck are you running? Not entirely sure. <laughs> Who knows at this point, man? It could be literally anything. I'm really, uh, yeah. I'm excited as hell for this set out. I'm like, I can't wait to actually like get my hands on these cards. Uh, two like days. All, all of the combos, man. All of the combos. Uh, Deranged Doctor, an eight mana, eight eight. Death Rattle, restore eight L to your hero. Like, dude, who's gonna play on eight mana and eight eight? First of all. Like yes, it's it's anti keelbot, but like it has to die too. Like, dude, come on, man, don't. Um, yeah, it's kind of really late. You like, know, if I, you're if you're yeah. a deck that wants that healing, um, on turn eight, aren't you sure you're going to die when you play this? Dude, you just play this in Q block, and you go eight <laughs> mana eight eight nine on turn nine eight mana eight eight. And then Dark Pack to heal for 16. How's that? That's not broken to you? You don't like that? I'm really hoping that like, no. a bunch of like Q-Block players start doing that. That'd be great. <laughs> Make my oh, job God. a lot easier. Uh, Dark Possession. One mana. Uh, deal two damage to a friendly character. Discover a demon so you can deal da damage to yourself. Uh, I think it's... Uh, is I'm not sure if it's random. It's not random, so you can just target. Um, so yeah, it triggers all your... Deal damage to yourself effects and discovers a demon. Could see play in zoo. Could see play. Uh, it's not going to see play in handlock or anything like that. It's a good arena card. A handlock cube lock. Um, but uh, yeah, in zoo, it's not a bad card. You can just deal two damage to your face and then trigger most of your effects and you'll be good to go. Yeah. Um, then it's nice like, card. Yeah. It's it's mostly for the triggering effect, but it's not a neg for the trigger. It's not just one mana deal two damage to yourself. It just discovers you a demon. So, mm -hmm. a lot of the board clear demons are not going to be around anymore, so, like, Abyssal Enforcer or whatever. So, like, it just probably gets you, like, a Doom Guard or Void Daddy or whatever. Uh, Definitely more cards for Zoo. Yep. Paragon of Light. Three mana, two, five. Has Taunt and Lifesteal. If it has three or more attack, it's for uh, Paladin. That's a rare. Uh, this card is strong. Uh, the stat line is really good. Uh, if you can abuse this card, it's even stronger. Uh, you have to find a way to put this into a deck and make it consistent. And if you can do that, then it's a very, very strong card. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got Sound the Bells coming in, so yeah. it's going into that whole buff paladin kind of thing. Right, you, you still have Bless of Kings. Yeah, Oof, that'd Bless be great. of Kings, Spike Root Steed, you got a couple things, so... It, it, it promotes the whole buffing, and even Dire Wolf Alpha is good enough, Yeah, right? even so, just a wolf. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you can get it abused, then it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I believe those are all the cards. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, we're done here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we should be. Um, anyway, nice. so that's where I will uh, cut the stream. I just want to say thank you so much, DJ Blackstar, for actually coming on to the stream and helping me review some of these cards. Uh, I was like getting a second opinion when I actually, you know, see the whole card dump and everything like that. Uh, uh, anything you want to say to uh, anybody that would be watching? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's been yep. great. Um, it's actually been really fun going through all this. Yep. And um, follow me on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm DJ Blackstar. Absolutely follow um, him. Twitter, follow him. DJ Blackstar JB. Yep. I'm going to be I putting play. down all this information uh, on the YouTube video that would be released probably after tomorrow. And... Uh, yeah, make sure you follow him on Twitch, but follow him on Twitter. Uh, thank you so much again for coming. Uh, this is where I will be ending the stream, so have a good night. Uh, and can't wait for the set release. Be sure to check out both of our streams when the set release comes out, because I know he's going to be playing some Burgle Rogue in the meantime. <laughs> and I'm going to try my best not to lower down my rank too much from Legend, because I, I think I'm going to make absolutely like the, the silliest of decks. But I'm going to definitely That's check out your stream, because I want to see exactly what you're thinking about when that Burgle Rogue comes out. All right, all right. So, Sounds uh, good. Bless my pools, fam. I bless mm -hmm. yours. Okay. And uh, I will see you guys later.